Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are live now with our second match of the day, and you have them on your screen. Complexity versus Astralis in a best of three here live at Blast Premiere from the Three Mills in London. This one uh, is, is an interesting one, I would say, uh, for, for not, not the reasons I think everybody at home is expecting right now. Astralis is going to be the clear favorites going up against Complexity, which is a completely reboot roster, com a whole new logo. Both have got stars now, but uh, Jason Lake's in the building, so there's going to be a lot more yelling than I think what the Complexity fans were probably going to be bringing otherwise. Uh, he's a little bit jet-lagged, but I can still maybe kick some chairs, bring some pistols, all that kind of stuff. Everyone know that? No, reference is a bit old school. Bit, bit of an old school yeah. meme. Warden's yeah. here, so it makes sense. He's still around. Hey. Yeah. No, oh, he's here right now. He's got that complexity jersey, but he's been with complexity for a while now. Yeah, too. Long, he's long, really long been hanging now. in there. Yeah. Saw Jason Lake around here as well, so the complexity uh, fellows are here. But uh, we're going to actually be talking about Astralis to kick things off, gentlemen. So we're going to bring up the Astralis lineup and take a look at some of the blast scores, see where they float, and very consistent across the board, in fact, for Astralis. Surprise, surprise. I mean, this really tells you all you need to know about Counter Strike is a lot of other teams have like super, they have like the, you know, Ronaldo, Messi, and FIFA level ratings on some of the players, and then you see them in the the game they're disjointed when you have players like this where everyone is basically a high level no one's even dropping i mean the idea he zipnix has 83 yet the roles he plays that's that's ridiculous efficiency so as you'd expect you have the quintuple threat as it were like at no point in time i always say this against astralis there are no two astralis players left in a 2vx that you know the game's over with yeah that's that just shows why they're so dangerous why they're so potent and maybe you're new to counter-strike and you're not sure who these guys are this is the best five-man roster to ever touch and play Counter-Strike, right? What these guys have been able to achieve on a team basis is something that we've never seen anybody else to do, uh, else be able to do, like pound for pound, role-wise, what they're able to do in terms of innovation and, and bring to Counter-Strike, it's changed the way the game is played. They've set a blueprint, blueprint sorry, for everybody else to follow, and this team right here coming in, well, I've been talking about the other ones having breaks. These guys have had a 56-day break. The last tournament they won was actually the, uh, the Global Finals for Blast, uh, which went down in, in Bahrain not that long ago, but these are the guys who, the break isn't going to affect them. Them, right, the, the, at least in my opinion, they're the most professional team we have in the scene. They could take it to you know, take a couple months off, come back, and I'd still expect them to play at a, a decently high level. And I would even say that it, as if to state how ridiculous they were at their absolute peak, they're not even at their absolute peak at the moment. Like, they're a little bit of a, a step off that. And they're still top four every single tournament, basically. They make most of the finals. If they make them, they win most of the tournaments. And they have the best map pool in the game. So, what, what really more can you ask of these guys? All right, Duncan, I'm going to hand it right to you. I mean, the guy doesn't just look like Tom Cruise. Okay, so two years ago, he wins the most MVPs ever in a year. Still can't get the number one rating. Last year, he wins all the majors. That's all the big clutch moments. Still nonsense. So it's obviously a mission impossible to be number one in the rankings for a device. Despite the fact he's always top five, he's got, he's got the top place on cruise control. We need the, uh, the drum kit here. All right. Yeah. Well, there's if Mission Impossible jokes they enjoy. We're going to just completely dun, skim dun, over those? Dun, dun, or? Dun, 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 All right, I'm glad dun, that we touched on a little bit. Look, dun, dun, if there's one team that's going to give PR <laughs> answers and I'm going to believe it, it's actually going to be Astralis, yes. right? Because I think that they all buy into this me mentality that it is, you know, the, the, the team game, the team comes above all Stats else. Stats look good. Yeah. Help this argument. Yeah, whereas, you know, they're going up against the team. We've got Complexity right here, who is uh, a very new team, a very young team. A lot of names here that maybe you've never seen before, right? Obviously, we'll start with the more veterans. We've got Rush, who was in the Cloud9 roster, who were able to win that major uh, many years ago now. I think it was two years ago at this point. We've got Config who, for, within the Danish scene, he was coming up at the same time as Magis, yes. right? He was coming up and at the same time. And would have been the time. player instead of Magus actually in Astralis. Yeah, and, and he's come over some uh, some attitude issues now and hopefully we'll be able to re-kick uh, his career in the right direction off with this complexity team. And then the newer names, right? Poison. He was playing over there with Windigo, a very promising Orpa. Obo. He looks like a baby. He basically is. This kid, you haven't seen a lot out of him, but I think it's going to be exciting to watch this kid develop as a North American talent. And then Blame F, who is driven like nobody else. You see this guy, he's putting out a lot of tweets that he is, you know, uh, divulging his entire life into just being Counter-Strike and focusing on that. And one of the, the key pickups for Jason Lake when building this team, right, was to get somebody of his caliber. He's taken over the in-game leadership role very early into his career. And there, this is an exciting prospect on paper. It's, in, it's gonna be one of these things we have to wait and see what they can build into. Also, Blame F, you know, it's literally didn't even fit within the profile picture. Like, when I told Jason Lake, get someone who can do the heavy lifting, you took it too literally, my friend. I meant in the game. <laughs> <laughs> he is a tank, isn't he? He's ridiculous. But he is, I mean, oh, you see, Danish Vikings, why they terrorized everybody for so long, you see? Right there, on your screen. Uh, the reason being, but as far as the team is concerned now, can they terrify this group? Can they come up with anything to go up against Astralis, who are undisputed world champs and the best right now? Strange confidence out of a player. 
That's a, that's a, that's, that's a quite thing a bit we, don't, of confidence. We, we don't normally see, right? Uh, what I was talking about in terms of uh, early in his career, Blame F has just picked up the mantle of in game leading, right? It wasn't, this guy was uh, playing in, in Epsilon or X Epsilon a long time ago, and he was a, he was a fragger. And then he got moved into a heroic roster where, you know, the in game leadership was thrown around a little bit, and now he's picked it up as a full time thing. So it's curious to see. I've watched these guys play a couple of their online matches, and they look like they have the structure. But going forward, the question is, can they play with the big boys? Can they play with the best in the world? And, well, they get the toughest task right here. I think it's worth pointing out as well. That when we did talk to some of the players in the VT for the backstage session yesterday, they were saying, in fact, I think it was even the guys from Astralis, that they expect this team will surprise one team at this tournament. Because I'm going to go ahead and say this. I never put too much stock in online games, especially not qualifier games. It's a totally different beast. You play an opponents you don't even necessarily practice for. Exactly. When you actually get to an offline setting like this, a team like this could be much better than they seemed online. So as far as the Betway odds are concerned, Jeez. that is uh, quite the big difference uh, between these two teams. But we shall see how it all plays out. First, we must take a break. And so we will be right back, and then we will see these players walk out onto the stage. Love to hear that you're playing the best team in the world in your opening match. But I don't think it, it matters for us. I don't think we're going to be the kind of team that crumbles under pressure, anything like that? I'm expecting a lot from Complexity. I think they have a great organization behind them. It's always difficult playing new teams. It's kind of nice to be the new team and just go in and we can play our own game. On the paper, it, it looks like a good and solid roster. You don't really know if the players have a good chemistry. I think we have more firepower than us rather have. So it's just about making the teamwork uh, work. The most important thing is just us focusing on ourselves and just play our own game. We are definitely ready for the how they like to play. I don't know if they will use all of their best stuff against us. The player to watch out for is Poison. I think honestly Magic is one of their really, really strong players. He's just like playing insane individually. So I predict the game against Complex to be 2-1. Uh, for us. We're gonna take a 2-0. I definitely believe that we can do a 2-0, but you know, as long as we win, I'm just gonna be happy. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see what they can do. We definitely have some uh, tricks up our sleeves. There they were in the tunnel as well, waiting patiently to come out onto the stage. 2-0 predictions for the Complexity Squad. Okay then, and the Straw is still hedging their bets. We've seen this before. So there you have it. A couple of words from both sides. Chad, I saw you laughing quite a bit there. Well, there's a difference between the two players right there. Like, uh, I think at the time, Config's attitude was the problem, and Megas was just the, 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 in the right place at the right time, and he sees that moment, right? If you hear the story about what happened to Megas, him getting dropped from the team, mm -hmm. him being, you know, he, quite emotional after he got dropped from, I believe it was North, uh, and then getting picked up by Astralis and now going on this run, and think about all the major trophies he's got in that cabinet. I don't think uh, that goes through Megas' head at all. But uh, going into this one right here, we're going to get the videos on the screen in a second. The band should be pretty clear cut. Bad news, unfortunately, is that the best map for complexity is Mirage. And if you've been following Astralis for the last, let's say, year, they ban Mirage by default. So that's almost certainly going to get taken out. At which point in time, if you're the guys from complexity, you like things like Dust 2. Certainly a map that Astralis can be fairly tasty on. They obviously put their hours in. Overpass is one where maybe I think you could get some interesting player there. Again, when you're at the level of Astralis is that they don't really have bad maps once they get Mirage out of the way, and that's just quite friendly because they choose not to play it. So I feel as though if you're the guys from Complexity, you probably should go for the overpass pick if you feel like you have confidence. I mean, some of you've done any Dust 2. Instead, you go straight into Dust 2. Now, we say it all the time. If the other team's good on Dust 2, it makes it a dangerous pick for you. And the problem is, it's not like it's the best map, but I've seen Astralis tool the Team Liquid guys on Dust 2, so they, they can certainly get busy on that one. Yeah, I, look, going into this here, I think they're just going to try and lean towards the strengths of your complexity. Let's say let's say Poison just pops off here and has an absolutely fantastic game on the AWP. Then there's a chance that they can be competitive in a game like this. Dust 2 can be very snowball -y as well. Let's say they're the individual... There's a double op setup you're going to see coming out from this Astralis roster. Where does Astralis go, though? It's Infernal pick at this point. Yeah, that would make sense. Certainly especially if you look at the strengths. Okay. Okay. They've gone with a surprise one, actually. I mean, I don't mind this. Obviously, we've seen Astralis have wins on this map yep. before, again, against Team Liquid. But particularly in this particular case, it's not a map that you think Complexity's putting the hours on. So what you're saying here is, let's just guarantee a win. They don't have an official recorded on it at the moment that yeah. is of Complexity. So for this, it's an unknown. For Astralis, they must be very confident in going into a map like Vertigo with it being an unknown because we don't know what that of Complexity could have worked on. That means... And that I think we're going to get the Inferno, Inferno Decider now yeah. because you've left it up to them as to whether they want Overpass or not, so they're going to take him first. I, I can't really see where the flaw is here. Like, I will, I'll add what, to what Chad said. 
So I kind of see where Blame F's coming from, thinking he has more firepower than Astralis. He's not correct because he doesn't always show up in the server, mm. but certainly people will underestimate the firepower of complexity, in part because of the online losses. I do think a map like Dust 2, they have their chances on this one. This is the one where really they could punch a little bit above their weight, a couple of their players go off. There's a chance. The problem is with the way the rest of the series goes, you would bet your money that Vertigo and Inferno are definitely going to Astralis. So it's mm -hmm. got to be a win on this Dust 2, I think, from complexity if they want to make it a series. Yeah, if you look at Complexity's official recorded map so far, they played Inferno five times. They've lost it every single time. So uh, for them going into Inferno, that one's going to be pretty bleak if we, we do go the distance, which should be very unlikely. This should be an Astralis 2-0. These aren't teams that we can even compare right now. This is the best team in the world going up against a team who, you know, hasn't even been able to qualify for the major yet. And they're talking, you're losing best of ones to a Polish team called Pact. Yeah, sure, it's online. But if you want to, you know, you want to be able to get yourself into a, to a position to, oh, you know, we as analysts can have stock in you. You need to be beating those type of teams right now if you're practice quality you're only playing against tier one teams then you're going against playing tier two tier three and they're doing you know dumb or, or gimmicky kind of plays that can rattle you that can throw you off here but like i said it's against astralis it's not like i'm saying we're going up against oh 100 thieves where maybe you get the best out of blame you get the best out of config the best out of poison maybe you win this is astralis this is this is not comparable by any means and also you've, you've got to get lucky with your map pool when you're facing an elite side they've got to be willing to play a map that yours just your absolute best but there's another one they have to buy that was never the case here i mean astralis as you've seen they had about 50 directions they could have gone in the veto, and they just chose to make Vertigo an interesting little exhibition game, I'm going to guess. I think and you don't give that away much against the opponents you might play later, to be fair. This is the thing. If Glaive hasn't seen them play an official on it, then he's probably thinking that it's a map that they, they don't play or they don't yep. play a lot because if you're not confident in going to it as complexity against some of the other opponents you've been playing, you would assume they haven't done a lot of work. If you haven't played any officials on it as well, that's also a worrying sign. And then you could think about it from another perspective. Astralis is starting their 2020 season right now. If you want to come out and say, we are the best Vertigo team in the world, this is a great way to do it. Just pick it. Just pick it against everybody and beat everybody. You don't have to show everything on the rest nope, of the maps exactly. in the pool, right? Get Vertigo Vertigo out of the way. There's a lot of teams that don't even play Vertigo. So if you're going to continue to keep everybody else under the thumb by showing you're good at the newest map in the pool, people are going to be worried about playing that against you in the future. So this could be a, a long game play from Glaive here. I wouldn't be surprised as well from Glaive. He seems to be the in-game leader who has his uh, thumb on everything, as you say. Now, however, it is time to get into the match. Are we sticking by our predictions real quick? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, this, yes. This is probably okay. Too zero. Let's be time real. to hand it over to Anders and Moses then to bring the cast. Oh yes, we're ready. Jason, how are you feeling? Uh, should be a very interesting game, this one. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I think interesting well, might be it goes in there. Well, yeah, but I think part of the part of the reason why that's picked, obviously, too, is that's that's usually a map that you kind of leave towards the end if you're a team that wants to add it. And for a new lineup that's starting to put things together, there's other maps like Inferno, like Mirage, as the desk mentioned, that they're going to want to work on. They're going to want to improve before you even get to Vertigo. For me, this match is it's interesting in the way that complexity is kind of this is the testing point. This is where they see what they've got right now at this moment, how things have gone for this first month or so that they've been practicing month or more. Um, in and then they have Dreamhack Anaheim coming up, ABSL Pro League. But this is kind of like the barometer and what do we work on moving forward. Kind of a rough test to start off against Astralis on LAN, but I, I kind of feel like it's at least Astralis haven't played any games in 2020 yet. So so that is, I think that might help out complexity a little bit. Um, that should be, that, that in itself I think uh, will be will be fun to see because we've seen that before when teams take breaks and they come back and suddenly you know, they're not quite looking 100% like themselves. I think that's the very, like, flimsy life raft you're clinging to if you're complexity. Like, maybe we have, like, one little window of opportunity. The problem is, even if you could take advantage of that in the first half of this opening map, like, what are the chances you're going to be able to take, take advantage of that across a whole series? I think Astralis, even if they lose this first map, even if they have a rough start, they're just going to come back and, and smash this series. So saying it's a life raft that will it'll it'll save them from the initial ship sinking, but it, but it won't actually it won't carry them to no, shore anyway. It's gonna be sinking. They, it's gonna be sinking very they'll soon. They'll just after. drown later than the rest <laughs> of the passengers on board. Yeah, it's just gonna be slower, <laughs> well, and a, a bit more miserable. And on that note, I think we're about to be ready with the game. I'm very excited by this one. Definitely, always fun to see Astralis play. But uh, yeah, this complexity lineup has been uh, you know so, something that's been in the making as well. Obviously, went and got you know two Danish players on the lineup themselves. So that's that in itself is fun and. It's a whole history, obviously, they, the, the guys in Astralis know very well 
uh, you know, what config is all about and, and his aggressive style. So it'll be fun to see how this plays out. Complexity going to be starting on the T side. Astralis on the CT side. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like a flashbang to set up a push out long. There we go. Sip is down in pit and device is there. They've got a bit of a crossfire, but it's already broken up. And look at that. Sip's on his own just saying, you know what? Don't risk it. Just let him fall back. Now he's bringing a bit of backup. Are they going to be able to flash their way into this? They have some grenades up at the A bomb site, but right now they're just waiting for it. And they don't even check for Sip. Oh, they're all lined up. Oh, it's a disaster, Sip. A lot of damage, just a one kill, but then comes the crossfire. They finally got rid of Sip, but that has cost them a lot already. Yeah, not enough kills coming out for such an effective crossfire, but they've slowed it down, they've done the damage, but somehow, Complexity has fought their way into an even situation, a three-on-three. Three. Bomb is up at Goose and Config's hands. They can still try and make this work. A plant would at least be something. It's going to be huge. No one jumping for the shot just now, so the bomb does get planted. And this is very interesting. Suddenly, there's a lot of pressure on Astralis. Magus, though, excellent headshots and rush. He wants oh. to fall away. He's going to take the fight anyway. Picks up a gun, but it's not in time. Instead, it's Magus with the triple kill, but that was a close round. They actually had the bomb plant down exactly where they wanted. I don't think Astralis had any smokes or anything. That could have been huge, but they just couldn't get away. Almost a miraculous clutch from Rush. Four kills. That would have been the ace in the round, and he just ran know. out of bullets to use. Now, one small detail. Config, you could see him jumping at that corner. He's trying to clear deep into pit, and he never spotted Zip, who was tucked very deep into that corner, and the jump just wasn't able to spot wide enough. That, that could have been a disaster, and somehow I'm very impressed that Complexity even made it that close. Yeah, because I mean, that could have all fallen apart in, in, in just that initial engagement. And the fact that they get the bomb down and get all those kills means they can get the Kriegs, the Scout here, and already doing a lot of damage device down to 35. So they're actually, they're quite dangerous in this round and they've got so much time to play around with. So let's see what Astralis do. If they want to challenge, that'd be risky. I like this play from Dupree and Magus though over at B. That's, that's sort of a I mean, he's very, very aggressive. Halfway into a push up and upper there. I like this boldness of Config working his way up catwalk. Rush and blame F with the Kriegs. Rush is very far back. It's all in this MAC-10. Good trade from Rush. A critical one before Poison went down. And Device has spotted one. He's taken a shot and he's going to back away. Meanwhile, Glaive, we're going to see this frequently in this map. He's pushed in towards the long cave. He's going to have a very fast flank if need be. Yeah, he's already out. That's something to watch for, and they just don't know. Oh, they're actually falling back in Glaive. If he sticks around top mid, he's for sure going to hear them falling back. Playing it patiently. He's getting the call anyway from B, saying, yeah, they're not really showing up. Magus got one kill over there, so he's just staying put, and this could be the round-winning play right here. This map position just just basically wins it, it feels like. They're, they're, this is going to be such a hard angle for them to even be aware to check. Now, the timing. Will he peek out towards long? He's turned away. He spotted them at last. He sees all three, or at least two. He's called it out, and he's going to remain aggressive. He knows they're committed into the cave. You can see Dupree and Magus on the minimap rotating over towards CT spawn. The device is ready, taking down poison. They just know everything. This is the what, what complexity they're doing. It could be fine, but the fact that they're getting caught and read all the way through is a big problem. Obo getting a huge kill there on Magus, but he's still going to get shut down. So they do a bit of damage. Would have been amazing if they could have got one more kill in there. But Th this is the style of play from Astralis that makes it so difficult for underdogs to be able to overcome them because they are just so good at getting positioning on the map to find the intel. You can't ever surprise them. And if you're an underdog, those are some of the qualities that you need to force an upset is being able to catch them off guard, you know, find a hit where they don't really know what's coming. But Glaive is, does this against the best teams in the world. He's going to push out long quite frequently, especially if he's not challenged. And they'll do the same thing. Magus will do the, the same thing on the other side of the map, pushing in towards upper dark from time to time. There was a point in time, definitely, when when Astralis didn't have this quality. I mean, even when they were really, really good and, and you know, top one or two in the world, where they didn't have that aggressive quality, and then they yeah. added it, and it just somehow became even worse for everybody. Uh, I think that was the one thing you could say about Astralis is they, they sort of they played them the mechanical style of Counter Strike to a really high level, but they didn't have that sort of open creativity quite to the same extent. And the fact that they found a way to add that even into their game is sort of ridiculous. And and I think you're right, that does make it very very hard to play against. Dupree's going to be frustrated. He didn't manage a kill, but I mean, you, you want to talk about just strong fundamentals, realizing in this second round that you're not going to have the Kriegs and the AKs on the board. Stay at a distance and still losing a couple players. A bit uncharacteristic, but not in any danger of losing the round just yet, although now it could get interesting. Config with an M4, a one versus two, but he's got Magus got low HP. Headshot angle, though, so it kind of negates the 14 health. It does a little bit, and he's just going to walk right into it. He that, needed... that negates the 14th health as well. <laughs> that, that'll do it. I mean, he needed some sort of element of surprise there. And yeah. 
didn't really get a chance. 3-0, and though, and a much more expensive round for Astralis than I think they were, uh, that they were really expecting. Now we've got Poison on that AWP, and Device has picked up one on the other team as well. So, yeah, now is, now is the chance for a, for a bit of a test here. They've done a lot of damage to the economy on the Astralis side, so that if they can turn this round, actually, Complexity might have a decent start. Oh, dropping for a fast cat push. Zip is going to be there to meet them again, and he's got the first kill. That's a Krieg in hand. Nade is going to slow down Blame F. A little bit of damage, and the utility negates any fast-paced aggression. Great shot from Device. That looked like a fight that maybe could have been... Oh, he gets the leg shot through as well. <laughs> that's, that's hard to handle. But I... I was just... I'm sad that Config didn't win that fight, because that's actually how I would want them to use Config, is to say, you know what, you, you lead the charge, wherever that may be, if it's long or catwalk, but I bet good money Config could win a lot of those fights. Sit, which is there so quick. And he had the Krieg able to just hold that angle once he turns the corner. Omega's waiting for a pop flash from the teammate. There's the peek, and ooh, he just what? cleans up poison. One HP, I don't even think he even realized it. Shout out to Device with the assist, and look at this setup. Covering each other just perfectly. Bombs down in mid. Even with Megas going down, it's not gonna matter. Four to nothing. And a quick four to nothing as Complexity has opened up this game on a tear on their T side. These have been very fast paced rounds. And some of them even, uh, you know, cl close. They, they, they could just, again, they just need to turn one of them. He actually does get a dink as well. And that's, that's what's really sad. But he has <laughs> does look That's similar, unreasonable. That is unreasonable. Well, that money situation you talked about, it's still kind of there. Megas can Dupree under $1,000, but that, I mean, as long as they keep some people alive in this round, enough players, it's going to build right back up. But I like what Complexity's doing. They have, you know, a half buy, but look at all the utility. I mean, four smokes still in hand, plenty of flashbangs, so they have enough elements of danger to be able to cause some of these kills and limit the economic growth. Grenade gonna go, I think, a little bit further. Holy hell. The odds are... Have you ever seen anything like those odds? Uh, no. No, not really. <laughs> not for a while. I feel like, uh... Yeah, if, you, if you're willing to the chance, then here we go. Gonna be pushing out. Thought maybe they would actually let Rush set up one of those smokes for, for CT spawn all the way from, from, uh, from outside. But it looks like Config's gonna be doing that anyway. So actually, double smoking middle is what they're signaling at the moment. That, that would give you the space, probably, to get a little bit closer with the pistols. And they're not going to find any fight in here, which seems like they're not even really trying. They're just they, leaving one. They want to pull the attention towards middle with three smokes, that there's going to be some kind of an execute, a set piece through the smoke towards the B bomb site. Meanwhile, four players lining in upper dark. Dupree's going to have a big job to do. He's scoped in. He misses the first shot. Magus is blind, and there's a chance. Zipnik falls in mid, but a double. Three kills for Dupree, and a fourth on top. Five to nothing. You know what? They did everything right. They did everything right to set up the strategy to get close to that AWP. This is supposed to be where where this weapon has a huge downside, but that's outrageous. Dupree orping. It's not the first time we've seen it. It used to be a bit of a joke, but then then there was one yeah, tournament in Royal Arena where it stopped. Being, <laughs> then it stopped being funny. It turned out he was really good with it. Uh, he's think, a bit of a freak. AW Peter, I think, is what they started calling him. So. <laughs> All right, some players out long. Config going to try and turn the corner, but Magus has a double of his own, putting down his Danish brethren. And another huge deficit for Complexity. And I, I don't mind this, this pacing that Complexity has started this game out, but I think at a certain point, and it might be right now after this round, you call a timeout, and I think you have to slow things down. Like, if you, you can't just run this fast pace every single time. Astralis is ready for it. The utility's coming out early. They're willing to challenge and fight. They're not scared of your aggression. This is where you kind of need to rethink the game plan. Okay. Eight health on Magus, 22 on Glaive. It's not to try and make up too many excuses, but some of those engagements, as they've been in previous rounds, just, you know, a little bit shy of working out in favor of complexity. And here's Glaive pushed in cave again. We said to keep our eyes on that on the minimap. He's going to have a lot of information. Astralis knows there's no hit coming towards long, and at any point, as soon as utility is spotted, Glaive can actually just push forward and have a giant backstab. Yeah. 
They do make the jump down, so they've got Rush moving closer to miss shot. will open it up. Meg is going down to the Molotov, but pushing through the smoke is Sip. He's swiftly traded. That's a double kill for Oboe, and it's not bad at all. Somehow, from a 5-1-3 into a 2-1-2, so that's a big victory for Complexity. Showing a little bit of power, and I don't know, Dupree with a knife out as he jumps up. That's a big risk. Oboe back for a triple kill now, and it's Glaive. Low on health from the earlier engagement in a 1-2. on two. I think he spotted it out, and yeah, that's going to help him, but it should still be tricky to get that kill, and Poison is swift out of there. That did nearly nothing at all, and they'll take him down. Complexity finding a very unlikely round and are learning a lot surely in the process. Just getting that catwalk and, and proving, ooh, that's that's something we can use. That's a well-executed set piece. That's great trades as well. I mean, this is a magnificent start, and I actually can't believe he got that first kill through the smoke. Good kills from Rush, though. A little bit of entry in the mid-round. Now, if you're, if you're Complexity, you're not going to win a whole lot of those three versus five, so you have to be really cautious how you open these rounds. Well, they got Rush out on long. Again, the flashbangs are being traded, and Glaive will come up heavily on top. He's got Device behind him, so they want to be very careful about turning that sort of a trap that's been set. Device? They don't have a lot of grenades to try and get rid of him, so, yeah, Poison's thinking about a Device. Oh, he just aims away! And a good return frag coming in this time from Complexity, and that, that gives them a lot of control. Conflict down in the middle, and Glaive is actually pushing up. This could get very awkward. He's not aiming the right way. The middle see the top of the head and misses the opportunity, and now he's in trouble. His teammates are quite far away. He's still alive. I don't think either of them want anything to do with that fight. Glaive's going to back off on Catwalk, but they're all caught in a really weird spot. Dupree, Zip, and Glaive. Oh, and that's really strange for Glaive. An awkward fight as he tries to transition into the site. Now come the utility, but at least they have the information at this point. Molotov's to slow down the cross. Bullets coming through, and Glaive finds poison. Oboe with a return, so they're keeping the pace right now. Config all the way back, but making that jump wasn't going to work. Oboe's now picked up an AWP and is fragging with that as well. Another 2-1-2 two two here. And Config finally, after having more or less trekked halfway around the map, is actually back in a position where he could do something. He's going to be setting up that smoke for the cross, and or it's going to be towards CT spawn a little bit further back down. And in the Krieg again we go. 30 seconds on the clock, and they need to make a move right here. Complexity Magus is now on the flank, and it's being Ooh. held a bit. He does get across, and he's got the bomb, but Config's not holding long, and that gives the huge opportunity. Magus coming in with a kill. And Obo in a one versus two, that's almost unwinnable. He's going to stand up for a kill. Oh. oh my god, he turns around for it! An unbelievable round, a quad kill. The youngest player on the team, and look at what he's capable of. Yeah, and they have, uh, I mean, they, they have a lot of stock in Hobo as a player to develop into a very, very strong piece of this complexity team. And that's a, that's a nice way, you know, to get on the board and get started in this match against one of the, against the best team in the world. <laughs> that's amazing. Love everything about that. Five to two. And finally back to pistols for Astralis. UMP at hand. Glaive again gonna win that fight. Complexity struggling with the opening duels, but at least they're trading pretty efficiently in this game so far. I like the fact that even though they're such a mixed team, they've embraced that American kind of you know, Counter-Strike where you say, you know, we're fighting our way back all the time. What would it be like if it actually went well in the beginning? What if some of these rounds weren't having to fight your way back kind of rounds? I think a lot of it is going to, you know, eventually when they when they come back and look at this series, not that it's over or anything, but the opening kills are going to be an important factor at the moment. Only Blame F has success on the entry for Complexity. He's the only opening kill they have so far in these eight rounds. Wow, is that... I mean, the fact that... If that is true, and then... I'm going to assume you're telling me the truth, Jason. I, yeah, then, uh, thanks. <laughs> I don't know why I put so much down. <laughs> but um, but then, then it's even more impressive that they're about to have three rounds even, because... That usually dictates a lot of what's going to happen in any given round. Well, they might get four out of this. This might be a two for considering Astralis has fully bought into this. The next round, if complexity is to convert this into a win, not going to be a whole lot to fight with for Astralis. But for the moment, that scout's got to be scary. Same with the Deagle. Dupree has somehow worked his way to car, and they're aware. Spamming him down. Config cautious the whole time, and there goes Zip. Really well done. I love the control here for, for a team like Complexity. That's one of the hard things, I think, to build into a new team, is to have all the troops under control. So the fact that they weren't throwing that round away by just being aggressive and, and fighting with the advantage, that's a good sign. Like, there are so many positive signs. They're winning some of these rounds that are hard to win against Astralis, and yeah. 
they're, you know, they're playing reasonably when they need to. No, but this is, I think, where complexity has to go on, on quite a bit of a run. I mean, already they're, they're three in a row, which is very nice. But for a young team and for a new team that's still figuring things out, momentum is your ally. Th this is where you have to you yeah. know, start feeling really, really good. And you have to string a lot of rounds together because Astralis, they're gods at you know, changing momentum. So while you have it, you better, you better take advantage of that. Yeah! <laughs> All right. I like it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's intimidating, though, isn't it? That's Jesus. the sound he makes in the last set in the gym. I, I believe so. Or, um, or if he was fighting that guy with a spear in Game of Thrones. He's <laughs> <laughs> just ready. Well, you know how that one ends. Yeah, we do know how that one ends. Five to three. And, um, yeah, all the pressure on Astralis. They bought two HE grenades, but otherwise they don't have uh, that much to show for in this particular round. So it could be it could be something. They have some players though that I mean, someone like Config. You talk about momentum, right? Yeah. So the, the, I agree completely that they, that's what they need to exploit. But if you could get Config up and running, then that's that is that's like half the half the equation right there. Well, especially because we, we know when he's when he's feeling the game and when he's you know feeling. Just his game in general, he's he's one of the most courageous players we have. He's got some of the biggest balls in the entire professional scene. So it's that's true. who you'd expect to start, you know, running away with things and start kind of exerting his dominance on the field of play. We've done the measurements. It's, uh, it's accurate. What we're saying is we need to see Config balls. Yeah, you know what? Um, there's some some prime content right there. I I reckon though we've got maybe half a generation of, of Counter Strike viewers. Maybe it's more than that even who actually haven't seen that version of Config at all. Oh yeah, because of just how his career. It's been, been a while. Yeah, it's been a little while. So yeah, that's something that we could even look forward to in this particular game or just in this version of Complexity that would be a lot of fun. Obo getting back up with three members joining him, and I don't see this defense holding a flashbang to set it up to pre with the CC. And that needs to be a quick kill. Only got 12 bullets to make it happen. Device there with the P250. It's good, but he can't pick up the AK-47. They get to do some damage, Astralis. This is really not a bad round for them at all, but they do make it through complexity. That was a bit sloppy, though, from complexity, and there was a chance with that kind of messed up flashbang, the entry. There wasn't a great positioning, great spacing on the trade. It works out either way because it's against pistols, but against rifles, that gets chewed up. Four to five as Complexity has rattled off all four in a row and right back into this game. And I guess the same uh, point could be, could be made for Rush, right? Uh, in terms of sort of highlights of his career and then, you know, just a little bit off, uh, off to the side for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, major, major winning Rush. He's got a, you know, a major trophy underneath his belt from Cloud9 in Boston. And um, he's a pickup that came into this team a lot of people scratching their head, not thinking he still had some game, and he's he's much like Config, you're exactly right. He's got to prove himself in this roster. That actually is a tag through the door there against Device, so Device still lethal, obviously, in this round, but having him down to 26 means it does limit a bit what he can do. He actually falls back from the middle, calls in Dupree instead. Very common setup here for Astralis. Nothing changed. Glaive's still not uh, pushing over at long, like we talked about. That is something they have to look for. Well, I mean, that's the importance of this run from Complexity. Keep Glaive honest. Don't let him cheat in that fashion. You can see he's, he's securely in pit. He's got Zipnik with him as well. Dupree clearing out mid at the moment, but is he aware of Config's position? He has no idea. Config's going to take him down. Opening kill. He was waiting for that. It looked like he was looking straight into the wall, but obviously all of his attention was just at the little corner of his screen. And he gets a follow-up on Device, and there's the power of that earlier shot through the door. Device goes down, and Meg is alone, and he's very good, but this is way too much to handle. They're coming in at every single side, and he's going to get shut down by Oboe. And Glaive, I think he took, well, he took, almost lost all his health to Rush earlier. Yeah. So they can't even do anything. Even Device got tagged up by Poison. That's a nice cleanup from Config. Two entries coming up mid. And that's a fifth round. We're all tied up for complexity on the T side of Dust2. Yeah, this is very encouraging. I was actually very scared because we were sort of, we were reading that story of the first game of Astralis, you know, the new year. Maybe they're going to be a little bit cold. And then they, they take five rounds and already think, okay, well, now if they were, that's gone. Now they feel great. And yet complexity managed to turn this into something that looks uh, competitive. So this is... That's a good sign, I think. Well, now they have the the economic control as well. They're flush with cash. They've got plenty of money across all of their players. Meanwhile, Astralis is really hurting. These two M4s are, are critical. They're going to have the full losing bonus as each team trades five to nothing runs. There we go. Five in a row, you're right. And I think Glaive and Zip likely drop M4s over to teammates. And I think we'll get another buy from Astralis. Dead of fun to see if they're going to be 
feeling pressure now to try and and do something else, Astralis? You know, uh, do they need to to sort of try and come up with something a little bit different? I'm I'm curious about that. Like, when does Zonic call the timeout? Does he does he want to let his guys try and play through the difficulty, kind of play through the obstacles, or does he want to have some input? Does he notice something yet? Blame F out towards long. Doesn't want to stick around for the fight. But actually, look at Astralis. They're a little bit more scared. In the beginning, in their 5-0 run, they were swinging and taking that fight immediately. This time, huddled back and using the utility. But no one is out for complexity. Wow, and they're giving up all of long. They just wanted to see if anyone was there to fight. Then they would have had three people ready, but instead, they all go back. And now, they've got a pretty strong setup here at the Catwalk and Poison. That probably should have been a kill. The bomb even leading, that's dangerous. And the follow-up, they just keep getting paid into this fight. And Astralis have all the players here they need. That Molotov nearly takes down Blameth. He's on eight health at the end of it. They get the bomb, but that is... That's almost like some sort of staggered defense coming in from Astralis. There's more and more people around the corner ready to fight. Oh, that's wow. a big push to the smoke for Device. If he'd gone a little bit further, Oboe is watching at barrels. But Device just able to catch the bomb carrier and a one versus five. Astralis back on the board in convincing fashion. Yeah, that was a, that was a huge round and it looks so different and Poison gets that kill, but... Um Yes. That's but, how it goes sometimes. Yeah, but you're exactly right. I mean, you could. this is exactly what Astralis wanted. They clear out long, they say, okay, there's no one here. We'll just rotate all three players back. We're going to have a utility stack on Catwalk, double nade, Molotov slows everything down. They get two kills from it. And Complexity just get lured into continuing to attack. That part of that great Ooh. shot. A timing, a lucky guess. They'll take it. Config pushing long in the meantime. He's looking to the ground. He just wants to get down in that pit. Can he find the angle? They know he's there. And he actually almost predicting that through. He neither could have taken down Glaive. Can they punish Sip for being here? Shooting through the smoke, but no one can catch him. That was a that would have been a great trade if they could have got that. Now there's still five versus four here from getting that kill in the middle. And Astralis, they're just pushing everywhere right now. They need to know for sure what's coming. Well, I mentioned this earlier. This is Magus pushing into Upper Dark. They're going to clear that out. Glaive and Device pushing up mid. They, despite being a man down, they have complete control of the situation. They know exactly where everyone is. They know exactly what's coming next. The question is, can they get their players in the right position? Glaive is going to go for a flank. Zip and Device just have to delay. They don't have to commit to anything. So much time on the clock that Molotov may be going to put a little bit of pressure on them, but Complexity have committed to it. The bomb is still not actually crossed, but Rush will get another kill, and now Astralis need to really think, because if they lose these guns, it's going to be a big issue. Config with a wide swing to take down Magus again. That assertive playstyle is just so powerful. And Sip and Glaive now waiting. 2 on 4 as the bomb goes down, and Config oh, no. lands another headshot. He's definitely feeling it right now, and they're going to get the final one. Blameth will be taking down the remaining player in Magus, and that's now six to six with all of the rifles gone for Astralis. Config had some phenomenal entries earlier coming out mid towards the B bomb site. This is another great and impressive round from him, but leading the way are the two Americans, Oboe at 12 and seven, Rush at 12 and nine. <laughs> the eye roll, not, not happy about the situation. They got another one. Oh that's two in a row, Poison. Oh. Well, that's a, I mean, that's a great way to get a, a round started. Why, why aren't people doing that more, Jason? <laughs> they should just try and do it every round. Another Bulgarian joining the fray. Config and blame up in lower tunnels, and this is a really awkward situation. Again, the defense just gets thinned out. Glaive starts to cheat towards CT spawn in middle. There's a heavy lean towards this B bomb site, and that's leaving Device at long A all alone. And because that kill happens in the first seconds of the round, they have so much time complexity to try and figure out what to do. To sort of feel out where that defense might be. I'm wondering if Megas is going to push into upper dark again with this AWP. Sees the utility. That's going to force him to step into the action. And oh, he might be able to catch Poison. This is going to be awkward. Obo turns the corner. Poison's up next. Megas standing his ground. He's going to lose the fight. Zip still here, still blind, and still shooting headshots. Yeah, he's still in there. Poison trying to push through, but if Sip stays alive, oh, the flick comes in and Poison will take him down. That was lightning fast now. Device is alone and yeah, they should get that bomb plant down. How do you get back into this? He's found an M4 and that's obviously going to be a slightly better tool in this scenario, but 
How do you get through here? He has a Molotov and a couple of flashbangs, but they have another Molotov on Blame F and they can buy a lot of time. It's a triple kill instead. Actually, a quad kill for Poison in this round, putting Complexity in the lead at 7 to 6 and also crushing the Astralis economy. What a turnaround. Yes, yeah, six of the last seven going to Complexity, and they've, they've got four entry kills in that run as well. That was something they struggled with to start this game in the first six rounds. They only had the one. Now they're starting to click, and you can see, I mean, these guys, Ooh. Listen, not a lot of experience together. A couple of these players, not a lot of experience in the pro scene. But when you're able to get those opening kills and you create some spaces in the defense, that yeah. young talent is going to shine. What a turnaround. Round number 14, and it's a... It's a oh, oh, no. Oh. Right through the smoke and the grenade of the follow-up. Confit goes down. Not what anyone was expecting. That even looked like they were winning that fight in the beginning, and somehow it just turns. So complexity. You said momentum. That's the... That's the thing you just want to ride all the way to victory, and this could absolutely break it. Well, it's so fitting for Astralis that per perhaps breaking the momentum is utility usage. The flash flashbang to blind the first two players that are coming out of long and trying to take control of that for complexity, the nade follow-up as well. And at this point, if you're a complexity, I, this is, feels like it is kind of the only option you have. Hit the pause button. See what's going to happen. See what's going to happen across the map. Who's going to push where? And maybe you get lucky and you catch one. Surely there's no way Device will check for this. Device is about to be so mad. Camera's on him. Death slam incoming. Knife. Oh, thinking about it. Got to be careful, though. Rush, don't want to throw this one away. Yeah, he's going to execute him. The knife is tempting, but not really worth it in this scenario. 40 seconds, and that clock running down is going to be an issue. Magus could get caught here as well. Rush will follow it up with another kill, and they're back in a 2-1-2. Two -two, and they actually have a real chance of doing this. There's not really a lot to fight back with right now for Astralis, even in spite of all the damage they did early on. Obo avoids the one Ooh. dig, and he returns in style. Accurate as ever. And Glaive now, USP halfway across the map, no armor or anything. I can't believe they turned this back uh, in their favor. Just very patient. If Complexity wins this, they're going to have a lead going into the second half no matter what. They'll be up to eight. This is magnificent out of Complexity. Clave could have chosen to go towards Long to pick up a rifle to save or go for the clutch instead, coming through the smoke. Deagle in hand. One at Long, one in the bomb site. When he's looking the wrong way, yeah, rushes in position and he saved them once again. A triple kill in the round. I mean, it shouldn't have been that close, but the fact that, again, this is just a tiny detail, but as a, as a newish team, you want to be able to prove to yourself that you can fight your way out of some rounds that aren't looking very winnable. The first round they won was a three versus five. Yeah. This is a two versus four that they win with no real map presence or map knowledge at all. So, yeah, nice, nicely done from Complexity to stay in these rounds and find a way to get the victory. Timeout yeah, called and timeout ended. Just like that. You asked about it, you know, when are Astralis going to start to sort of feel maybe a, a bit of the weight of this? And uh, I can't really blame them. Russia with 108 ADR. But everyone is doing a, a fine job right now on the complexity side. Eight to, what, was the, what, was the, what were the odds? One to 26? One to 26. I can't imagine it's going to change too much, but I, but I feel like it'll, yeah, it'll definitely shrink. This is very, very impressive, but still early, early on in the game. Oh yeah, we can't, don't, definitely don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Early on in the game, early on in the series. Listen, the life raft at the moment is looking great. It's still inflated. Yeah. No holes, they've got plenty of water. Still have, still have enough food and water for all five people on board. <laughs> so haven't even had to throw anyone out the life raft yet. All got, good signs. Got to imagine Blame Map's share of the, of the food. Oh God. Config just ate the nade. Obo as well, down very, very low. Knowing Config, he might have just been beating his chest out there saying, yeah, is that all you got? <laughs> <And then> <laughs> actually, <laughs> just one, not. huh? <laughs> We've got more. Clave up close with the M4. Going to be sneaking in, and Rush will find the headshot. That's an impressive kill because he wasn't even flashed in or anything. That could have gone horribly wrong. That's going to set some panic into the defense because Dupree is all alone with an AWP at the B bomb site. Poison can cause some kind of a distraction. Meanwhile, Zip has rotated away. It's just device, but this is who you want. The AWP can only get the one. Good return from Blame F. And now Poison can cut off Dupree as well. He's got that kill. I think Sip saw, but it doesn't matter. Poison coming through actually might have been saving Blame F there. It looked like Sip had a bit of a read on that one, and Magus is alone with 16 health. And they're going to get the bomb plant down again. Complexed. That could have been shot all the way down. That's a beautifully savvy round from Poison, from a young yeah. player, to just hold in mid, you know, destroy the rotation, be able to peek up ramp, help your teammates. That is really good patience from the young Opper. Magus, I don't know. With the M4 especially, 
He can't just even get the one headshot. Blameth will take him down. He is loving life for them. Nine to six in favor of Complexity at the halftime. That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing, but they've got a long way to go still. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This is going to be... We can take off long crap. Yes! Always. Listening to them. Nice shot, man. <laughs> Ooh, it's, it's much louder than I was expecting. <laughs> it's, what's he shouting? Astralis, you're going down. We'll see. They've got a long way to go into this second half. That's uh, we, we mentioned even before this match got started, even if yes. you come out and have a good half, even if you beat Astralis in the first half, I mean, that, that, that doesn't put them down for the count. This is a team that comes back plenty of times. They can grind it away. And I almost think on this map against Astralis, the CT side is going to be more difficult anyways. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. And, uh, it, you know, again, for a team that's finding out, you know, what they're all about themselves, that I think is almost universally true. Those CT sides can be very tricky. But I like the attitude anyway. You know, you've got you've to believe in it before you can actually start to make it happen. So... Let's see what uh, what they do in this particular round. They do have actually a couple of flashbangs into the fuse kit there on Blame F, so they could go uh, even into some sort of after plant and be and be pretty competitive. Astralis, on the other hand, have picked up two smokes and a lot of flashbangs, so I don't mind that they're waiting around. They're checking out the map, pretty default kind of setup right now. I'm sure once they figure out where they want to go, um, once those smokes go down, it's going to be you know it's going to be an all-in from that point on. They do also have the P250, so on device. That's a pretty big commitment from Complexity at the B bomb site. Three players inside of the site. Blame F just sinking back from middle through the double doors. And it looks to be the right call for yeah. the moment because the bomb is still outside of upper dark towards no, man land, no man's land. Just Magus holding for any kind of a push. Two smokes, two flashbangs for utility for the Astral side. That's on Glaive and Zipnix. They're both going to be in middle, so you have to imagine they're going to set up for the mid-B split. But Complexity, this is exactly what they want. And Astralis, are, they're not even making a big mistake. They've got it all figured out. They, they know there's no one in close to middle. They know they are no one catwalk. They're going to take the fight right away. And Config will land a party headshot, taking down Device oh. and Megan. And he'll follow it up, taking down Dupree. That's three. That's a whole arm of the attack gone. And the follow-up is amazing. A quad kill for Config in the pistol round against his... Own countrymen. That's, that's a strong start. That's the kind of config we want to see. We saw some evidence of it in the first half. That is a beautiful piss around. It's been a while since we've seen that smile on that man's face due to yeah. what he's done in game. Very impressive stuff. Three quick headshots. Listen, it's not going to go that well each and every time, but it looks spectacular when it does. And that P250 that was, I think, meant to be second in line to sort of to, to catch that uh, potential for the USP one shot. Just didn't do anything. That was really, really well shut down. Some grenade damage over at Long. And a real chance now for Complexity to, to actually pick up the map. I mean, they're not out of the woods yet. You still need to survive this first round, but they're obviously going to have at least a buy round as well, Astralis. But this is a pretty good lead that they're building right now. See if they can, you know, mentally again stay in the game like they did in the first half and not get carried away by some of the early success. Is it four deagles and a scout right now on the Astralis side? And again, pretty basic for the moment. Scout on catwalk looking for aggression. Zip waiting back in T spawn towards long looking for aggression. Three players in upper dark. They want to attack this B bomb set again. That's config. That's oboe to defend. Config out of utility. Oboe has one flashbang. There's no Molotovs, no nades, not another smoke to slow it down. Oh. Leg shot coming through the middle. That does actually a fair bit of damage to Config. He was shooting at Blame F, who was spamming, and he hit Config way far behind, so that's going to be frustrating. Config with the M4 goes to a headshot angle because of the 11 HP. He'll sit in the back of the B bombsite. Obo will be forced into the support of rotation. If this slows down at all, coming into B, Rush is going to be there with a really, really quick flank, and they have to go for it now. They've already been red, and there's no way to get through this smoke. The grenade is good long range, but the reload is in there on that MP9, and Obo will absolutely clean that up. No chance here for any kind of a bomb plant. It'll be a triple kill for the young star, and a lot of money his way. 11 to 6 now. And Astralis had invested in that round. They needed a lot more than just the, you know, the odd kill. They definitely did. Small little detail, uh, the players at the B-bomb site on Complexity forgot to recover that M4 in the excitement of taking the round. But again, small detail, they're happy with the victory. 11 to 6. This is an 11 to 1 run. 
That's, I mean, that's, you should put it like that. Truly juggernaut-like. Hard to imagine, isn't it? Not many people would have, uh, would have gone so far as to predict this. Did anyone? Was there any crazy person on the talent, uh, there talent was, lineup? We have a lot of crazy in the talent team, but no one this crazy. Nice shot from Poison, a follow-up tag. What's he, three for three? Make it four for four. Good shooting. He's got another kill. And they are rolling. 12 to six. He was just practicing his aim there, wasn't he? There's no pressure. Ooh, now we're ready. Listen, just like me, he landed this morning. I think this kind of a game erases all jet lag. Yeah, it's the cure. Who, who would have thought? Who would have thought just destroying the best team in the world? No longer tired. That'll wake you right up, won't it? <laughs> 12 to 6. Here we go. Weapons in hand. Device with the AWP tapping away his Magus. A little bit of damage done to Oboe, but no big deal. Between, between Blameth and ooh, ooh, opening kill on Device, that's not at all bad. He was very aggressive. I like that. I was going to say, between Jason Lake and Blameth, there's, there's a good amount of shouting on this team. Oh, the backstab is in. He wanted to get out to help in me. Like, how many blame Obo? They, they, they thought that was going to be more of a push there. He got shot in the back instead. And listen, that might be like the first maybe mistake caused by getting lost or by getting fooled by the attack that we've seen in this half. So fair play. I mean, you'll, you'll take that one. Three players with such a convincing take of the beat bomb site. No reason for these guys to risk their utility, risk their money. It's going to be a strong buy in the next round for complexity again. But Astralis creeping closer and with five players surviving at a victory as well, does wonders for the economy. It helps out a lot. And it just stops the streak. Yeah, the ridiculous. Good God, it's been seven in a row. But here's, here's something, I mean, it's a bit of a shame for Complexity that they are, that, you know, these aren't AWPs and, and M4s that they're able to save. But even the fact that they're sort of doing it, because actually Astralis didn't do that that many rounds. There are a lot of rounds where Astralis lost that they actually lost more or less everything. Yeah. Which is also uncommon, that that is another strength of theirs historically that you know, even when you do in rounds against them, it's not, it's not completely defeating. So, it could be interesting if Complexity could keep this up economically. Obviously, if they break their own economy here, it's broken by Astralis, that's going to be... That's going to be an issue, but that is a, that's a bit of a power play for Device. It's good to see Astralis flexing a little bit in the other direction now. You know, Device yeah. just kind of taking matters into his own hands, going down middle for the pick, right beneath the smoke. Still a scout in Poison's hands. No reason to, uh, to spend money when you already have that weapon. He's got 6k built up behind it. And again, fast pace. This is what worked in the previous round with the AWP. Now it's Dupree with an AK-47. Plenty of smokes and players in position to take advantage. Only two defenders, Obo and Blame F, and they're not working together. No, they need a lot of kills. They do line up for Blame F, and he gets a double. That's more than you could have asked for. And now Obo needs to get out. Yeah, and he has to find a way, because if he stays there, again, he could easily get shot in the back. But that's impressive for Blame F. He could have easily just been traded, and that would have been probably the end of the round. Rush now sneaking in. Oh, the timing. Sip is going to be there, and he gets taken down. That seems like he got absolutely cheated out of a sure victory there. And now it's a three on three. He got robbed, but you could see it coming. That player was slowly just creeping away from his crosshair. Poison, and this is where the trouble is with that scout, or maybe not. A headshot right through the corner of the door, and now he's back to the A bomb site. That's low HP on Glaive. Glaive's a bit scared to do this on his own. Device out in the open, that's a big risk. Poison's not even scared, he's just running for it. Does get a bit of a flick in, but not quite connecting. He was close, and they gotta be careful again. Glaive is just a bullet away from death, and he's close to the edge. He's gonna be going down, that leaves Device now. One versus three, a jump just to confirm it, and he tries for it. He's really crazy now. Device, he should not be winning this. They gotta be careful right here. 30 seconds, don't let him take the fights. Wait for him to plant. He looks for the shot, but Conflict will take him down. Saving the round, and putting Complexity at 13. That. That was a moment that nearly, they nearly got too hyped in that one versus three. Yeah, those, those clutches will clean up as they get some more experience together, but they certainly gave Device every opportunity to win that. Some one-on-one -on -one fights on that ramp, and still another buy coming in for Astralis. One more obstacle for Complexity to survive. Six round lead. But if they do win this one, That'd be something. Config down to 30 from jumping past the middle. Just a shot through the door. At a certain point, it was Oboe and Rush leading the way for Complexity. This has become a very team-wide effort from Complexity. Three players on 16, Poison on 14, and Blame F on 12. No one shooting too far up, and no one not doing their share. It's a positive sign as well. 
You have to imagine that will help out the just the feeling afterwards, even in the game, right? No one has just feel like they've they've been dragged through the game. Everyone can uh, can be a little bit proud of what's going on. Yeah, six round lead. They've got long though, Astralis, and that's dangerous with Dupree down in the middle. If they have any success at long and Dupree finds the right timing to push through, then it's going to get tricky. Here are the smokes coming in. Still 55 seconds on the clock and Dupree's just waiting in there and nobody's challenging him at the moment. So let's see how successful they are here, Astralis. I feel like this is a lot of space to give a team like Astralis to work with. Yeah, but there's so many players here. Oh, a gap in that smoke, a rare mistake. Oh, Poison really needed that shot. Dupree is lurking in middle, rushing the site. Oboe's gonna add one kill onto it. He's on catwalk, and still Astralis have not been able to make the cross. You know, they're really slow about this, and Rush will follow it up, taking down Glaive, and it's sort of crumbling right at the precipice of the A bomb side. It's Rush again, taking down Sip and Dupree. He wanted to be there a little bit later. He wanted that bomb plant, he wanted more of a distraction to the A bomb side, and he never got it. That, most, that must be the most uncharacteristic Astralis round. I think yeah. that is where you see more than anything the Rust coming into play. A very weak, disjointed hit onto the A bomb site. Some missed shots that are normally a lock for kills. And Device going to try and save this weapon. He knows he's being hunted, but he's been shot from behind, from Catwalk, and everything is taken from Astralis. You mentioned that gap in the smoke. A lot of yeah. little details that you don't really ever see out of Astralis. So that's interesting. Good tracking from Obo. This is the one where it's it's interesting. Glaive goes down. Yeah, there's some good flashes from Poison, but you know, another player just left all on his own. Zip has nowhere to go. You notice something cool as well. When Poison misses that shot, him and another teammate on Catwalk immediately turn to go fight on Catwalk. They're so mentally prepared for the idea that, okay, like rather than shooting through the smoke, let's make sure that we're not getting backstabbed and that we hold that Catwalk control. So just some, some tiny details that are worth, you know, looking for. They have some, they have some theory down, and obviously they've, they've shown us some very cool things, which is interesting considering Blame F in an interview just said, you know, they didn't have the greatest boot camp. There was still a lot of things that they were fixing, which is going to be true for, for some time. But reading that interview, it painted a much darker picture in my head. And yeah, we, 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 we mentioned Astralis might be a little bit rusty coming into this, but not this, not this rusty. Maybe they were lying. Maybe they were just <laughs> setting us all up. Sandbagging. Sandbagging. Oh, no. That's dangerous, Obo, though. He'll save it. If he would have gone down, and he absolutely could have, that would have been two rifles, and Poison would have been left alone with the Norp over at long, so it would have been all kinds of bad. And he's still got to be careful here, but he's on point with that AWP. Oh, he's no. got no issues at all. Taking down Device and Dupree. It's about to be 15 rounds for complexity. I can't even believe I'm saying that. What's up with Bulgaria just cranking out Oppers? I don't know, they've got, they've got something going on. <laughs> yeah, something in the water. They've, they've found a way. Bulgarian talent factory. 14 to seven. Glaive's gotta be scratching his head at this point. They're gonna have to go on an eight to nothing run to force overtime or something miraculous here from the in-game leader. I like this, complexity playing very disciplined. Everyone playing with distance, everyone just sitting back, no one making a mistake, everything's covered for the moment, and everyone can just fall away once they get the information. Nobody has to commit to a fight. Yeah, they had that one versus... Whoa! That's a fantastic headshot. Get banged out. Holy yeah. Hell. It was the same angle, he just won that fight uh, twice, but this time Glaive a little bit quicker. But yeah, they had the one versus three against the Vice that they almost gave away, so I can't blame them it's, for not wanting to do that. It's a scout, though. It is a scout. The grenade will help out, and the flashbangs to follow it up, and all the patience paying off here. 15 to 7, ladies and gentlemen. What a, what this, a wild start. This started out 5 to nothing. It has been a 15 to 2 run to get to this point. How many people at that point, at the 5 0 point, do you think said, you know what, now's the time for me to get something extra to drink? Like, I'm just going to walk away and it'll be all right. And you come <laughs> back, you know, five minutes later and you think, Whoa, Like, yeah, what? this is about how I expected things. Let's, uh, let's go watch League of Legends or something. Yeah, now, here we are. <laughs> amazing stuff, isn't it? As you said, they would need a an eight round run, Astralis. They do at least have the money to start that run with, and it, it is not out of the question. But what a way to get this series started. Why is everyone looking backwards? Like, Zonic, what do we do? Please help. Help. <laughs> Call the timeout. Pull the cord. Oh, they're loving it right now. So, some I opposite mean, reactions. Enjoy it while you can. Vertigo's next. That, that's a good point. I was about to say as well, 
It seems unfair. If Astralis managed to make Vertigo one of their maps that you sort of have to ban against them, then they have that and Nuke against almost all teams. Yeah. That's too much, you know. That's that's two maps out of the seven that you just know people probably won't be able to pick, so... Yeah, things weren't already unreasonable. Blame F holding the line and they double up. Poison had the leg on Dupree, and that might seal this first map. Poison going for more. Peeking towards top mid, there's the jump, but he's even got that. He's having a pretty special game so far. Astralis, I think, just trying to set the pace of this round, saying we'll beat you to that corner and then we'll open it up and that's going to be the start of something big. And instead they get absolutely shut down. Poison looking into the middle, a little bit scary, but he's found the right angle. And that's the bomb down on Device. He has really been uh, outside by Poison a number of times. Now it's a 2 on 5. And again, Complexity, if they can just remind themselves to keep it cool, they should be fine. Blame if going down. I think Meg is a little bit further up than they were expecting. And that could result in a bomb plant here. This isn't quite over yet. No, but what they do have is Rush and Oboe out towards Long. Yeah. Poison and Config going to be coming from CT spawn. This is a powerful retake, especially with the advantage of utility. Zip and Magus have to get aggressive somewhere. And it's towards Cat that Magus is going. And they might be in a lot of trouble. Config has that one Molotov, so if they go on Catwalk, he could block at least one of them out, and that would be an issue. Now they're trying to get in there. Magus will get the kill, the turnaround, and actually he'll follow it up. Magus with the grenade, and now Rush on the other side. This is where they need to close it out. Don't ever give Astralis a chance to get back in a game. He's waiting for it, and Magus will take it down. A quad kill in the round to somehow save Astralis. That is an unbelievable turnaround, a two on five that Astralis managed to turn. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. That's magnificent, and you don't want to give Astralis those chances. That retake might have been a bit quick. I didn't see where all the utility went. Complexity had a lot of nades, and I didn't catch a lot of it coming out in that four on two. Might have gotten a bit over eager. Poison jumping with the AWP for Intel, and that's just too many kills given up to Magus. Oh no. He got slowed down initially and stumbled into the remaining barrage. Meg is taking him down, leaving Obo alone, and that causes an instant rotation as well. In the middle, Blamef just pushing up. I don't know if they know. Sip is sort of thinking about it, but this could get way out of control. He's very exposed, and in three seconds from now, he's about to get shot in the back. I don't even think he realizes he's still ducked down here, and they might not quite be able to see him, so he's maybe got a chance. He's turning for it, and there's Sip. I love the idea, but... That does not pay out in the end. Now, it's Config somehow with an AWB, not the site that we're used to seeing. He's going to pick up the one kill at least, and we'll fall back a little bit. The bomb is up there, and he tries for the blind shot, but there's nobody else here at A. Oh, Device is even going to make sure they're punished as they fall away. He's going for three. He's going to take everything from Complexity, and it's Config to go down finally. 9 to 15. <laughs> and no more money for the defense. It's time for a deep breath for this young team. Astralis looking to make a late run. And this is where, yeah, you had a big lead. But as it disappears, the pressure is just going to grow. Complexity has to be very careful how they play these last six rounds. Absolutely agreed. You just heard a uh, device saying there, you know, it's either their last buy or their recoing. So they have a pretty good read on the economy, and they're going to be confirmed in that right now. And that's still the problem, you know, even if it's going to be six rounds, you, just, you know that not all of them are going to be fully equipped from the CT side at all. And this crossfire in middle, impossible to break with USPs, some would say. Yeah, that's about as impossible as things get. And then Device starting to heat up with the AWP. Vegas doing some work with the Krieg. He's got 21 kills, and this is an easy march into the bombsite. Blame F going to go down last. Double digits for Astralis. Still smiles, despite being five rounds back. Finish him is, uh, is exactly right, isn't it? That's what they need. That's what they've, they've got to aim for, because if you keep them alive into overtime, I just feel like that's not going to end well. No, I feel like Complexity have to win this in regulation, or I think overtime is just way too much to ask. He's 15 to 10, another timeout being called, and I, I think it's just because complexity. I save here if I'm them. I know you have, you, you feel like you really want to buy, you don't want to be giving up rounds for free this late in the game, but just establish your money, get all the cash you possibly can beneath you, make sure you have everything you need for the last few rounds, as many buy rounds as possible. So Definitely. they go with deagles and nades. And the nades especially is what I'm looking forward to, you know? Five of them all together, just, can just do some find work. a way. That can do some damage. It would be, uh, you know, a strong sense of irony if they were able to take down Astralis using grenades in the uh, in the winning round. 
Just that utility damage. They are stacking up over at long, so they've got at least three people there. Device is going to be at the corner with the AWP, but he's already backing out, so they do a fair amount of damage. That's not bad at all. We're obviously hoping that uh, that you would, you know, land a whole stack of them. Oh, they went for it. Tried to bait a shot out of Device, but it's not going to happen. He holds the trigger for the second peak. He's down to 17 health. Two nades left on Oboe and Blame F, and they are nowhere near each other, so they can't stack those up. And Astralis has got the idea. Look how patient they're being on the map. At least the three players, Zip, Device, and Magus, very far back in T-spawn. Glaive being cautious as well, and Dupree sticking away to join up with his teammates. They're looking for the follow-up aggression, and they found it on Catwalk, and now comes the hit. It's just poor, lonely Oboe. With the Deagle tagging away at them, but you see the return. It's unfair, isn't it? Ooh. Somehow Poison lands a shot on Glaive. That's absurd. All the way down through the middle, he's able to get that. Device is there covering, making sure he's got a little bit of count on what's going on in the middle, but the bomb plant is going to be going down, and I think that, even though that's impressive from Poison, should not be enough to get through this. And Device isn't going to be baited to committing to that fight down mid. You could see him check out towards long in case he was just being frozen in position for a flank to come in. Now he cheats over towards the B bomb site so we can have a better and safer angle. And Complexity just looking to do some damage to take some guns away right at the end, but Astralis not giving them the opportunity. Yeah, really playing this one safely as they should. Still, so much time has already passed, and I think the best complexity could hope for right now. They got the Krieg on Oboe, which is actually kind of a big deal. He's playing that B-bomb site alone a lot of the time, so that's oh what no. you want. Oh, they, they steal it. Rush will pick it up, and Blame F will get an AK at the end. So, some good recoveries from complexity. Four more rounds to go for Astralis, and they will complete the comeback into overtime, which would be quite something. Yeah, this is nice trigger discipline. Device doesn't... Ooh, he flinches a little bit, but he knows what's coming next. Config not quick enough on the draw. This is a spectacular shot. Doesn't have any impact on the round, really, except it puts an AK-47 on the floor that Blame F would eventually pick up. But now we get right back into it. Guns on both teams, full utility on both teams, and fast pace. Zip is going to get the opening kill. Flashbang is perfect. He's blind in return, and Rush is going to try and hold the line. There's flames everywhere. He's got a triple kill. Poison is going to close things out. It's Glaive again, and a one versus four. Map one is going to go to complexity. What a way to win. That was down to the last second. If Rush goes down in the middle of that, they don't even get close. I think Astralis just take long and win the entire fight, but instead he stayed alive. And there it is, 16 to 11. Complexity do what nobody would have expected, and they take map one against Astralis. First game here in 2020 for Astralis, and it, it is not what you're expecting. I, I mean, listen, first land game for this very young team, and they've even struggled in some of the online qualifiers that they've played in, which is wild to see them come in here and have that kind of a performance. Remember, at a certain point, they went on a 15 to 2 run to gain map point. That yeah. is incredible. Blue be blue. Finger bomb. I bought it. He's Paris. Nice! nice. nice. Well, there it is. Winning moment for Complexity over Astralis. They did it, boys. 2 1 prediction. Wasn't, out, uh, wasn't so far off. But it's a 1 0 lead right now for Complexity. Now, where have I seen this storyline before? Okay, Astralis okay. takes a lot of time off. They come in a bit rusty to a blast event, and suddenly they're losing. Forget about that one. You've anyway, already killed that. Uh, you've already is, killed that series. This is one of the angles, right? Which is the the flip side to what Chad was saying about the fact that they had so much time to prep. Because my theory on boot camps is boot camps are for tactics. They're to fix things in the team. They're to swap people's roles around. They're to level up like, preparation for opposition. The problem is the one thing they don't do, which I do not think you can simulate, is you can't simulate pro play in an official match game on LAN. You can only do that by playing at LANs. That's why usually it's not your first LAN where you hit the ground running. You top form it's your second or your third when you've got your feet under you that's when you can make the most use of what you've done so like we definitely can get the complexity and all the brilliant things that they did in this game and some of the great performances but i also have to say like that's not the astralis i was watching for the last six months like i've never seen them be so poor at adapting they were getting out fragged 
They barely called timeouts. They didn't actually look... In fact, they just looked in disbelief for most of that game. I think when you start the game up 5-0 and you get the double ops on Dupree and Device, which I think was going to be fantastic for them on their city side, and then you go and you lose that half. Uh, what's happening right now? As soon as I see Astralis going to cross long and they have a gap in their crossover smokes, I'm oh, with Duncan. That's not the team uh, that we all have known to, to love. Okay, fair enough. At least he kept it reasonable. Like, to be fair, they understand Vertigo is not a map they play. Obviously, Inferno is one of the best maps ever for Astral. They know the series isn't over. This is best of three blasts now, obviously. We're in the Blast Premier era. I actually thought the real banter he should have done is he should have done one of those classic, like, where you get overly hyped for revenge, and you're like, but you guys, wish you going with me now, heh, <laughs> heh. And they're like, well, now we won three majors. Could, could have been four. <laughs> Like, you know, so you can't really say anything, can you? Like, the series is far from over. Yeah. And quite uh, frankly, you saw at the end there, that was almost starting to slip away. Well, like, when we look at, like, stat lines for games, right, we normally look at opening kills as one that you would attribute to, to the team who's going to win the game to have more. Well, that wasn't the case. Australia had, had more opening kills. You look at 1vx situations, the swing rounds, right? Well, Megas sure. won two, and there was only one one on the complexity side. So when you just look at those metrics alone, you go, well, Australia's probably with those numbers behind them, should have been winning this one, but they, sure. they weren't. And I think here we got to see some of those highlights from the individuals that we got. Yes. Because we, we know that there's firepower in the team, but for them to come out here and do that to Astralis and Astralis to look, you know, that out of sorts, that, that's the perfect storm. Mm. And you heard that from Config in the sense of, you know, you know what, we knew what they were doing. Yeah, that's because you have a plethora of demos to be looking at, right? To be uh, being able to look at their tendencies, look at the way they approach the game. Their CT side was exactly the same. Dupree, every the secondary orb, yeah? You're going to see a lot of this, but every single time you watch Config, whether he sprays or not, it's to the head every time. This guy's aim is crisp. There's a reason why I said this. Even last year, when I went and quizzed ex-teammates of his, every one of them, I talk about ex-teammates that don't even play with him, they all said, no joke, even if I've played Advice or Dupree or Megas, this guy has the best aim of anyone I've ever played with. So the big problem has never been his skill set. It's mm. how motivated was he, where was his attitude at, what did he think of himself in the game? Did he think he didn't need to practice, whatever? Because you could see, I mean, they weren't wrong. Overall, blame Effie is wrong. They don't overall have more firepower if the Astralis players are at their peak level. But that wasn't Astralis at their peak level. Meanwhile, Cole looked great. So let this be yet another millionth chapter in the book called Don't Judge Teams by Online Results. Because online is a there different is game for me. Exactly right. There is always that. There is always also the fact that Sponge brought up that point in terms of having so much information to go off of. Sure. Astralis is going to be the most studied team in the world. Mm. But then you also have, and this is one of those things where Astralis are going into a match where they can only look bad. Right, in a sense that, sure. you, you know, it's like you are expected to win. You are, right? Every, you have I mean, everything to heavily. lose. Complexity yeah. have nothing to lose right now in terms of they're just here to take it to them. So Dust 2, Super Aim Heavy Map, where stars can shine, you know, the stars have aligned for complexity. What are we expecting to go into Vertigo here? Vertigo's a bit more structured, and you heard it from Config, not as much experience for complexity on that map. Here's what I'll say about this map, is this is also the nature of being a top team in best of threes, because if this Vertigo game starts, and it's clear from the first three or four rounds that complexity aren't comfortable and don't really know what they're doing, all the hype that they're winning this series is immediately deflated. Astralis will rampage over the map, and it should be an easy win, and next thing you know, that's what happens when you build the best teams ever. Suddenly it's 1-1, and where was all your big advantage? So mm. I just want to see early that they've got anything on this map, that they've even played the map, they even have any, any sense for the positions. Yeah, look, in a 15-round in a stretch, Astralis will only able to get two rounds on the board. So that's the snowball of this hype that we were seeing come out of the guys from Complexity. But if they let that get the better of them, then they can just get blown out of the water here. We can live in a world where they can come and be competitive on this Vertigo map and, and you know, we can get to the third. But uh, look, I'm thinking it should just be uh, a, 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 a turn back around from Astralis here and they should be taking the next two maps pretty easily here. But if they're going to play like they did on Dust2, anything's possible. Perhaps sinks, I think. I, I, this is where it's like, this it is the map be. where if you need to go get a drink, if you need to go like cook some food, this might be the one. This could be it. Well, in the interest of honesty, Jason, I, I, I won't lie. I just feel I was trying to do my job as well. You know, I was just trying to say, yeah, you know, it's going to be, you know, you've, you've got to you've got to do that. But turned out it, it ended up being really fun. So if you missed that, you should go back and watch it on a VOD somewhere. But right now, you need to pay attention to this Perhaps one. Perhaps the Blast Premier YouTube channel. That's exactly it. Check it out. Go catch up on everything. It looks like they're leaning towards that A-bomb site complexity. You're going to be starting on the T side. And, uh, well, shut down early. You do not want that kind of a beginning. In fact, you want to be the one landing that early kill. They know you're coming. That's a pretty good grenade, but they need a follow-up if they actually want to take down device so far. All they do is damage him. That is a pretty interesting grenade to just throw as a, as a single nade. They've also lost Oboe now, and they just don't have the manpower to fight at the bomb site and clear sandbags. 
and it doesn't even matter. Now, here's where Disaster is going to uh, to strike for complexity. It's on this ramp at this A bomb site. Once guns are in hand, it's not going to be USPs peeking down. It's going to be the AWP of device. It's going to be picked up Kriegs. It's going to be M4s. It's going to be a lot of nades, a lot of smokes. It's going to be hectic. Uh, that's a strong start for Astralis, obviously. But I don't know. I I sort of feel like it looked like they had a plan that they wanted to follow through to the end that just didn't adapt along the way there. Because one, it's one thing losing the early fight to, to just a clean you know, USP shot like that. But even then, as we said, they sort of kept slowing it down and they were just getting chipped apart you know, one at a time. Well, that, that's what's going to be interesting to see is if, if they've even played this map enough. They've not logged officials on it, but how much time have they put into it in scrims or in, in, you know, in just theory crafting with their practice? Are they going to know the angles to peek over when the smokes come in? Are they going to know the protocols to clear things out when the smokes eventually clear? More and more teams are starting to get quite good on this map. There was a time when, you know, you could have been the first team to make it your own, I think, not even that long ago. You could, you, you could have decided, okay, we're going to be the Vertigo team, but I think now, just, you know, so many are, are starting to, to really work it out. Well, I think part of that was that there was a bit of a carousel. I know there were like three or four teams that were vying for it at different points. That's a good kill on the config, an opening frag for complexity, but low HP. Two HP on config, 33 on rush. They are not in a good place. I think one, now that the map has kind of settled down, now, now that there's not a change every, every week or every two weeks, teams are much more confident to put some time and put some work into this map. And I think that's where you're starting to see the hierarchy of Vertigo kind of settle down. That's a good setup there. Especially with the double stack of Dupree and Sip as Obo. He wanted to take the whole swing with the Deagle and it made perfect sense, but just wasn't ready for two of them. And they know where Blame is as well, so looks like there's not going to be any kind of a bomb plan and they will only lose Magus in the round. Astrala is excited about that, obviously. Dupree with a triple kill. We were seeing a lot of eye rolls and sighs and just, you know, general annoyance out of Dupree in that Dust 2 map. I think there, there was probably, I mean, I saw Device kind of laughing and smiling towards the end, despite the fact that they were getting kind of demolished, but I think there had to have been a, a certain level of stress and frustration throughout that map, although a team of this experience is going to be able to brush it off in the break. Yeah. Megas growing a beard, finally shedding that mantle of Megas boy. That's true. Megas man now. He's an adult. Yeah. They grow up so fast, don't they? <laughs> they do. Okay, that's a big difference from, from, you know, 1 to 26 to now, you know, this. That's a good change. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. Was that, like, close to, like, an eight-fold <laughs> difference or something? That's a little bit outrageous. But, but fair enough. I could understand that. If you were watching that Dust 2 map, you're, you could have really changed your mind, I think, in the, uh, in the interim. Magus set up in a pretty strong position. He's got some backup there as well. Right behind him, Glaive could jump up or get boosted up, I think, by Dupree, but not even needed at the moment. And Astralis, I think, just enjoying the fact that you know this is a smooth beginning. Did he tag him through the wall? I think maybe even slightly. Either way, this round is just going to slowly come to an end. Poison can't complete the kill. Magus with four kills, but... He's going to back away from trying to get the ace preserved. The weaponry, good shot from Obo. He had a fantastic dust too. We'll see if he can get going here on Vertigo now that the guns will come out in round number four. And this is where we're going to start to get some kind of insight into some of the questions you were asking as we we're heading into this map. How much do they actually know about this map complexity? Do they have a good style? Do they have some tricks, even just anything to get them into it? They did, I mean, they did lose the first five rounds on Dust2 and then they sort of, they, they swung right back, so... The thing that scares me the most is that we, we just see we utility and nades and smokes actually hold the thought. Aggressive! Oh, and Device was not expecting that. Pulled the nade out at the wrong moment, and he gets trucked by Rush. Yeah, he was fully trusting in that Molotov that was down in front of him, thinking no one is going to be crazy enough to peek that. Debris getting pre-fired, and Rush continuing! And beating Dupree to the punch, he's going to be putting out that Molotov, and Glaive will pick up a kill in the meantime on Poison, that is, all the way on the other side. He was down the A ramp, so Magus now holding the bomb site here for a minute, that's the bomb, so got to be careful and config. Yeah, I think he's just overexposed a bit there. Rush continuing the charge, and he's getting three before he finally goes down. Magus gets dropped, and now it's on Glaive with 42 health in a one versus two, and if Complexity could turn this around into a win, that would be huge. I can't believe it's even gotten this close. It was a five on three and they had the bomb site and it's now a chance for Glaive. Low HP and Oboe, he's given up the position. Important, critical trade for Blame F. 
But that's a costly victory. Four players go down. Another buy going to come in for Astralis. And Config has left the server, so we're going to get a bit of a uh, tech pause. And yeah, I don't know if Device maybe hit the wrong button, and but he definitely thought that Molotov was going to at least keep them at bay for the moment. Again, Obo is a, just as a young player, you have to appreciate. Because he's been in a couple of situations where he's been, you know, he's been sort of set up to get some of the kills here, but this time he's realizing, you know what, I'm low on health and we need to know where this last player is, so I'll sacrifice myself, you get the return kill. That's yeah. amazing. That's, uh, it's a small detail, but, you know, again, if you were just trying to get an overall sort of 360 view on him as a player, his aim is obviously there, but those little details just make you happy, don't they? It also, I mean, to be fair, it also could have just been Blame F being like, listen, rookie, jump out there, let me know where yeah, he it is. Yeah, it could have been. Find everything out for me. But even then, like, y y there are players whose personalities will, <laughs> <laughs> you know, will prevent that kind of stuff. I mean, speaking of that, it, it's, pr it's, it's, a, it's a perfect talking point because that's something that Blame F mentioned in, in the interview that I referenced in the previous map. Talked about, you know, one of the struggles they're having is there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of skill in this team, and there's a lot of players who want to be put in positions to show how good they are and to be able to succeed. And one of the guys who's had to kind of take a back seat, as he did in Cloud9, was is Rush. Yeah. And he's one of the guys, in, and this is now a theme for Rush and pretty much every team he's on, without complaint, willing to take up the roles that, and the jobs that nobody else really wants to do, the roles that are a bit dirty, that don't fall into the stat line, that don't make you look good. Yeah. And Rush again on this team has been kind of that rock for Blame F as an in-game leader as they've tried to figure things out. No, it's, a, it, it's definitely worth talking about, isn't it? Got to find a way to pack away some of that ego, at least when it's needed. Uh, obviously, the team performance is the big thing, and the catching glaive. That's Obo oh, showing up with the Galil. There is a return on Blamer, though. We're back in a four on four. That's a really weird miscommunication for Glaive. I don't know if he was checking behind him to see if anyone got there quick, but I mean, that's a position where you think he should just be facing forward. That is dangerous. Against the Vice, he, he wants another one, and he's not going to get it. I think they had to have spotted him. Had to have seen that and just said, nope, no more jumping for me. Although he does come back to it. Device wants this kill. Nothing forcing him back at the moment, so no reason to give up the angle. Good kill for Rush, and again in middle, it's big trades. Complexity break through this defense. It's Device and Dupree, and they are split on different sides of the map, and Dupree's under a lot of pressure. It's yeah, just knowing that, because they know what Device is. He's been there all along, so that's amazing. Smoke goes up and Dupree just trying to buy time. Device, he's he's making his way into middle, but he can't even just rush it. They don't know if someone's in there waiting for him with a rifle, so he can't just book it there immediately. Dupree has somehow wrapped around them with the Deagle, and he's tapping away and taking down Poison. And here comes Device with an M4 instead. I can't believe that Astralis are back in this in a 2 on 1 now. Obo alone, he's got 30 seconds, and he's picked up a Galil there. Not really sure that makes a big difference right now. I think that bomb plan is going to be what's really tricky. And he goes straight for it. Dupree almost catching him in the middle of it, but that at least gives him a little bit of space. He gets that headshot immediately. That's very quick. And now does he know? Device pretty much can only be at this angle. He's out in the open, so if he doesn't win this fight immediately, Device will take him down, but Obo will do it! That's a triple kill. A little smile at the end, but... Huge victory. It's creeping up, and we saw how he caught fire in the first map when he got a bit of confidence under his belt. That's got to be a good feeling for Obo. A huge clutch to com keep complexity alive and break the economy. I will say, play of the round. Dupree, that's godlike. Hiding in the smoke, delaying as much as possible, playing to give Device the opportunity to save the round, and it's just nearly there. No! <laughs> oh man, they love this. This round though, starting very quickly with Glaive getting a kill. It was traded almost immediately by Blame F. A little bit of a flick there, and there's a lot of presence at this A bomb site and complexity. These are the rounds you, you can't give to Astralis. You have to find a way to slow this down now, get back in the lead. It's four on four. You should have all of the advantage. Yeah, you, you have control. You have a player over at Sandbags. I think slowing it down exactly what you said, that's the perfect idea. Zipnix knows someone is there, but it's such a powerful position to be in because it takes so much attention. Everyone else just waiting for aggression, waiting for a push. That's a great shot. Ooh, Ooh an even better one from Magus. And he's going to try and build, but the bomb is on the floor. Damage on Blame F is still pretty relevant here. Obo, he's gonna stand on his own. The takedown Dupree, and it's still a two on two. That grenade landed right in the face of Sip, and he's down to six health. 
They've got the bomb and they're walking back in device. He's here to almost catch them. At least he'll know it. He misses the chance for a kill, but he got the information. That means they can rotate Sip over immediately. And then Scout will probably take down any one of them if they're uh, not quick about it. He's almost getting caught on the open, but he snuck his way into the corner. I don't think they realize that he's here yet. He's here so oh, quickly, no. they might not check for it. 25 seconds, and yeah, they're gonna go... Oh! oh! The Molotov! That's just almost a random throw, and they pick it up, and now Device, he's low enough, but they take him down over again! Another triple, and another clutch for him. What a way to begin. <laughs> that is so wild. Back-to-back -back rounds and back-to-back -back clutches for Oboe, and that's a hectic, a scrappy round. I can't believe that Molotov caught him. Just barely caught Zip, but he was certainly going to end that round. Is he slightly yawning at the I end? I think he did just yawn. <laughs> that's... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that was a taunt. It's just, you know, developing his own style a little bit. Well, they don't know it's a taunt yet. They'll, they might see it on the replay. That's how next level it is. <laughs> He's setting them up for later. <laughs> Oh, Device aggressive, and Device is taken down. Glaive and Zipnix got aggressive towards a ramp, which has been successful a couple times in the past. I I love this attention to middle that Complexity are, are, are putting on Astralis right now. It's really, really worth doing, I think, on a map like this, because... Oh, God. Okay. If you can keep punishing them in middle, where they only have, you know, one guy, then you're actually forcing them to make a bunch of defensive choices, then... If you, if, you, if you really have the, the practice and the level on this map, you can start to exploit that on its own. If they start putting two people in here and having more of an attention to it, you can, you can really find a way to make that work. And they've been winning, I think this is the third round at least, where they win this fight in middle, maybe even the fourth. Feels like uh, Astralis a little bit uncomfortable at the moment. I mean, yeah, some of these are just pistols, but taking some, uh, some peaks, some fights that they, you know, we don't normally see in these situations, but this is, this is really nice for complexity. Four in a row now to take a one-round lead. I, I mean, we don't have to talk about it just yet, but just an interesting note, remember, if, if complexity, you know, for whatever reason, has sold their soul to the devil and they're able to take this 2-0, that would bring Astralis down to play Na'Vi tomorrow in the losers match. It's a game I would like to see personally, um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I wouldn't even know what to make of it. Dust 2 is wild, complexity <laughs> looking good, and that's a headshot with a scout and device taking him down, but quick refrag, that seems to be the way that all of these rounds are starting off right now. Glaive moved up very far, and he's alone though, that's, that's the one issue. They don't clear this, surely. Surely Oboe's not gonna clear it. He was looking in the direction, but wasn't really prepared for that fight. Glaive gonna get his ankle shot, and he recommits. He's going down, Poison, with another scout headshot. And that grenade though will at least put it in the favor of Astralis. Rush sneaking into middle, and this time Dupree was ready for it. That leaves Poison. Very, very rough one versus three, and Magus won't even letting it close to the side. Astralis will even out the scoreline, and we get 4 4. And uh, they still have the money to buy on the complexity side, which is that, that's the good news here. Yeah, bad news is that this is all they have. They're scraping together everything humanly possible to get as strong of a buy as they can. Two Kriegs, two AKs, and a Galil on Rush. Poison's doing some work with the scout. <laughs> that's. That's really cool to see. Remember on Dust2, he had that really cool scout round and he kept it into the next gun round as well, so not shying away from the weapon. Let's see. Can they actually beat the Astralis grenades here? A lot of them raining down. They push right through. And you see the flashbangs just coming in everywhere. Rush has taken a lot of damage and Glaive now lining up for a double kill and it nearly had it. In fact, the Molotov from Sip will burn it out and he will then follow up. So that's the problem with getting slowed down on that ramp. It's just more and more keeps showing up and I think Blame is in a lot of trouble. He just can't hold that many angles. It's one of those things where if you win the first fight and, and you actually, you know, you get control of that part, that's amazing. But when you get slowed down like they did, it all falls apart. And Astralis is more than happy if that's the kind of aggression complexity wants to bring out towards the A bomb site. They'll, they'll just dump utility. And even if they trade that first kill, they had three more bodies to throw at the problem all at different angles. So that bottleneck gets even more deadly if you're a complexity player. Right at the start of this ramp, is where, where the CT sites have started throwing smokes. So the people who are leading the charge, they just get completely segmented from the people that are supposed to be backing them up that are a little bit further behind. So they, they can't even really help each other out. It's, it's a really, really big risk. And it works out great for Astralis this time, and that also crushes the complexity economy. So now there's a chance for the old Danish side to try and get a little bit of peace back in here. You, know, you see that smoke that's down there? 
half of them were in the start of that fight, they, they don't even know what they're shooting at. Well, one round lead for Astralis and a bit of a timeout. One AWP on Dupree. <laughs> the many faces of Jason Lake. He's, we've got, we're going to have a whole reel at the end, won't we? Hopefully. I like it. We could just play that through every timeout for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> we could, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure those, that kind of footage exists for, for, like, for like 10 years now. <laughs> yeah, you could do like a real t juxtaposition back to 2005. Megas go, he's gonna be behind the sandbags. Good shot, he's dinked up, he's got a follow-up kill and it's just pistols, so he's doing work. I have no idea how he got that first, fourth kill. Excuse me, that's quickly mopped up. Dancing and jiving, wasn't he? He got dinked in the first engagement and just continued to take them all down. So job it's, well done. It sounded it sounded pretty bad, and then I kind of saw notice that it was all all Glocks, and at that point, I mean, he even gets dinked twice. Yeah, I guess that's the downside, isn't it? Six to four, and Astralis building a bit of a lead here. Magus got fourteen and six, doing a pretty good job all in the zone there. Story's got to be Obo's clutches. Ooh, good leg shot for Dupree. Blame F down to 15 health. This time, not fast paced towards A. Zip and Device have complete control of that A ramp, and they see no presence. They hear no presence. So this has surely got to be telegraphed for a team such as Astralis that is experienced on this map. They know they have a leg shot. They've seen at least two players towards the B bomb set, and they've seen nothing at A. But look at Config. Look at him on the minimap. Is he on the upper ground? No, surely not. No, OK. I was getting worried for a minute there. <laughs> yeah, I was too. No, I think, I, th I mean, I think what, if, if nothing else, this is what it gives Astralis, right? It gives them the chance to keep these three people at mid and, and the B bomb site. Because otherwise, I think they would be, they'd be favoring pushing someone else into middle or maybe another person over at A, but they can just stay put here. Device, aggressive position that he can't actually escape from. Sip would have loved it if someone would have flanked around to try and take him down. Then maybe he could have been there to get a kill. Now he's at least got some backup in Megis who is the heavy hitter right now for Australia. Wins the first fight and nearly gets the follow-up. Sip will surely be able to close this one out. 40 seconds, and Glaive will find Blame F, so Poison can't even really go anywhere. Well, keep our eyes. This round got away from complexity a little bit. They were really relying on some individual plays to sneak into some open space. And that, if that's going to continue, that's your indication right there that complexity is not yet tactically well-versed on this map or well-versed in the theory to play this map to, to have a deep enough pool uh, or a deep enough playbook to contend with Astralis quite yet. So we'll keep our eye on that. But three-round lead and starting to look very strong for Astralis. They've got a healthy economy behind these victories. And another quick tech pause coming in. Yeah, I mean, this is, again, I think they had so much success fighting in middle. I realize now it's Megas who's there, and once he's got that Krieg up and running or, or really anything, it won't be easy to break him, but I would still try and go and revisit that. Because I just, I just think once you get the middle of this map on, on the upper side of the, of the map, it's so effective. You could do so many things from there, and they've already proven it a number of times. So maybe not so much with the Deagles, but I'd love to see Complexity try and hit that maybe just one or two more times. Because I think that A ramp rushing it, I just, I don't think that works anymore. I think the grenades are too powerful and it's not really worth it. Yeah, the, the different angles. Teams are good enough now to stop that and slow it down. We've already seen Estrella shut it down. I think there's been some success for Complexity. I have to think their next gun round is going to be towards mid. I think they would challenge George Magisk and Dupree, who at times, they've had some favorable trading going on. It's Deagles to contend against the AWP of Dupree. They're, they're thinking about it, but Magus is right there with him. So even if he misses a chance, it's still not going to be easy. Everyone from Complexity looking for aggression that's not coming. And unfortunately, they're even looking for it towards the A bomb site. And Magus, a vertical angle, angle on the other side of the smoke, nets him one kill and some information. If Oboe can get this frag onto Glaive, that'd be massive. If that was an HE, that would have been the end of Config. But he actually just sticks around with the Deagle, and Dupree does not want to challenge it. Glaive showing up for a strong kill there, and he's ready for more. Expecting them to come through the window. Standing on his own for a triple. That's really well handled. 
And, I don't know, a bit of danger that round. Maybe could have gone out of control, but Astralis are now starting to edge, uh, or sort of lead the, the map quite a bit here. Eight to four, doubling the round score, in fact. And Complexity are back with rifles. I still, th I still think that mid part of it, they did take down Magus in that particular scenario. He was smoked off, so Dupree fell back from behind the smoke, and then they actually traded him, so... More evidence that they can, they can at least fight for middle. Ooh, flashbangs out. And there's that utility to slow down the fast-paced play that's not coming this time. They want to give Poison a chance with this AWP. A boost up over the smoke, and there's an opportunity here. Glaive, he's got to be careful. How much does he slide over? And still the smoke, just keeping him safe, but not for long. Good shot from Poison. Completely unclear who could see what in that scenario. But Glaive actually, in some sense, surrendering the three-man advantage that they had over there, because no one could really help him out in that moment. I mean, they'd thrown some grenades, and maybe they were just banking on the fact that they wouldn't be checking it, but they did. And Sip will take one in return, and he's going to fall back. He knew the Molotovs were coming. No point in sticking around, really. How aggressive do Complexity want to be to challenge into this bomb site, though? Rush is rotating over. All four players are going to be here. And this is where we'll test them. Do they have the smokes? Do they have the nades? And do they have the protocol to watch for device coming from behind? This off angle for the flank. It's going to be Rush to challenge and Rush to fall. They've okay, got him. That's Obo just standing up. Stop crouching for a second, so at least it's a 2 on 3. But again, they're not even really getting close to the bomb site yet. They need to find a way in and... They're almost out of grenades as well. That smoke is going to be fading. Poison has to win the first battle here. It's not going to be working out. It's a headshot on Magus. That's not an easy shot to hit, ladies and gentlemen. He goes oh. for more. We'll pick up Sip. He's actually cleaving his way into the bomb site. And Dupree now. How do you retake this with an AWP? If you challenge Poison, odds are you're not going to come out on top right now. He is lightning fast at the moment. And with that smoke still up, they can even get back behind cover. If they do, what is he going to be doing? I think Dupree was looking for Oboe after the plant to slide to the right. There was a gap in that smoke. Poison's going to take the fight. He's got a quad kill on the round. Impressive shooting from Complexity's Zopper. He's got their fifth. That was just Poison all the way. And you got to love the assertiveness coming down that narrow lane to get a new angle on the bombs. You're exactly right. This shot is incredible. And even this one, this follow-up, beautiful entries into the, B or the A bomb site. Excuse me. I mean, if he misses that first shot... It's over. Yeah, there's almost nothing they could do. Even just in terms of having to, to find that, if he just ducks and doesn't even move up from the crate again, they, they, how do they get the bomb plant down? Every time the, the camera comes on Poison or Oboe after they do you know, some kind of a very nice shot or a nice sequence, it's like they have that smile on their face that's just like, oh, I didn't know we could do that either. <laughs> it's a surprise to everybody. <laughs> well... I mean, what a luxury to have. Talking about Obo and some of the some of the triple kills he's had to, to clutch it for complexity on this map, but Poison is uh, you know, a bit of a gem as well. 14th round, though. Five rounds is it's pretty good for complexity, but it it might not be enough here. As he just got his hair cut, didn't he? This is a brutal, brutal push for Glaive. Obo never had any idea coming through that smoke, trying to keep control. Glaive remaining hidden behind the box. They're trying for the same push again. That even suggests that it's something they've been, you know, practicing. They have a feeling that this can work. And so far, I'd say I've not been super impressed by this A hit. I feel like it, it doesn't actually get to where they want it before they've lost too many players most of the time. Well, a lot of times, remember, they've been they've been dealing with the aggression of Astralis peeking down this ramp. At least this time, they have the kind of space, and there's a little bit of calm as they can set up for the hit. We'll see if they have the smokes. They do have four still in hand. They've got to be... The, the question is, do all four players remember a smoke to this bomb site? <laughs> that, that is... You've got to hope so, because this is their big chance for it. Let's see, Rush is actually over on the left-hand side. Could be flanking around. Sip almost flashed in, but he's falling back through the Molotov. And there's Rush waiting as the smoke fades. He's going to win the first fight. And they would love to go and do this right now. 25 seconds, the flashbangs are in. Sip can't see anything, but they're not checking for him. And he does get traded. Convict 
coming in with a very, very important kill. Otherwise, I don't think they could have made this work. 15 seconds, they're going to be smoking it off. They need to f run across the bomb site, get that bomb picked up and planted right now. 10 seconds on the clock. Config finding one more kill and hiding at the edge. He can't get it done. He goes down and they're right on top of poison. He can't make it out. Dupree will drop him. That's a... That's a pretty close round, all things considered. Well, it, it might have even been a real chance for Complexity. They threw two smokes behind those default plant boxes, and both of them left a gap on the left side that made it a very awkward engagement, an awkward cross into the bomb site. Config had to get hyper-aggressive to keep that space for the plant to even go down. Nice round from, I believe, Dupree, who got a couple kills right at the end. And it's 9-5, to five. last round of this first half, but I would say, for a team that doesn't have any official matches logged on Vertigo, this is, uh, this is not the worst showing in the world. This is, this is much better than I expected. Yeah, I completely agree. Now, they did have the benefit. We haven't seen them, like, show any kind of tactical prowess. They had the benefit of the clutches from Oboe early on to get their first four rounds on the board, and then they've just been stonewalled. It's been six of the last seven for Astralis, but that defense Ooh. is under a lot of pressure, and now it's collapsed. And somewhat needlessly, I'm not sure why Glaive wanted to sacrifice himself, because Dupree had actually already made it out. I mean, there was a lot of pressure in the beginning, but I felt like Glaive maybe a little bit too aggressive there. Sip gonna show up with one M4 kill, but the bomb is down. And it should be a sixth round here. It's blaming for land. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ooh, he's laughing. It's it's all good. We're he all having fun. Took the ticket right out of that round. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't. We can <laughs> we can find some good memes while we go to halftime break. Upload Just, that to Reddit. Yeah, get on it right now, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with the second half. Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic, isn't it? If you don't laugh, you cry. Sip with a, with a reaction. We're not not quite sure what to make of it. Still, 9-6 at the end of the half. That's the whole first best player in the world. This, that is very true. What did, he, what did he finish? Third and third. Third in like three years in a row or something like that. <laughs> I think he was second last year of Iron Symbol. Oh, yeah, it could have been. He'll get number one eventually. Their whole theme is to the stars, and he just, you know... Opposite direction? He went the wrong way. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to go up. Not really working out so well. Well, this is, uh, this is an interesting affair. Nine to six in the favor of Astralis here on Vertigo. They're down one map. Complexity shockingly took Dust2. And if Complexity wins this right here, series is over. They take the victory for their first land match against the best team in the world. Yeah, I don't think anyone could even believe it. If, if, you, if you start telling people, then they're probably just gonna, just gonna st straight up not believe you, so... Very unlikely for them, I would say, to even win one of the maps here, so... The fact that they've done a good job, even on this one, which we're completely unsure about their level of preparedness and what they've got planned now on the CT side, and Poison nearly could have had that one, and that was a big kill to open up with. Device will be taking him down, that cleans the way into the bomb site for the bomb plant. Config will find a kill, but still, how do you get through this? It's very, very hard to get in and actually defuse that bomb once it's down. They do have a defuse kit on Rush, but Config, that flank is up, and I don't know what they could do. They don't have a smoke to block anyone out. This is going to be an almost impossible battle here for Complexity. Three versus four to try and get back into it. Glaive gets shot right off of the building, Ooh. and Device goes down. They've actually made it possible now. They're bodyguarding Rush, still not defusing. He's the one with the kit. They're fighting instead and missing all of the shots, and I think that might have been the one chance. Rush, he'll get a chance, but it doesn't matter. Sip should oh. be able to turn the corner a little bit far away, and ducking in, it will be right in the last second. A triple kill for Sip. They nearly had that. Less than half a second away one missed shot it would have been over yeah that was very close complexity almost able to steal that round away some phenomenal shots on this retake zip was under a lot of pressure but either way 10th round for astralis yeah even uh, even fluffed a couple of those bit sketchy for the clutch master he needed to go for that uh, that matchmaking 100 cents defuse where you're just spinning all over the place <laughs> 
just have that hot hot keyed in on your mouse or something. All right, we have some nade stacks. They're not coming in all at once. Good shot with the deagle. Blame F. Taking down device. Some return spam brings him very low. But progress for Astralis at the moment is blocked. Grenade even does a little bit. That's pretty helpful. I would say taking a fight through the through the wall there. Not really worth it with a scout though. So I'm glad that Poison gave up on that idea because they have a lot more firepower on the other side now. Do they have a flashbang to set up rush? Or no, they don't. That's a little bit unfortunate. He's the one with the flashbang. It, it's really cool when you can flash that angle. Problem is, Oboe has a deep angle, Config's in middle, but they don't have the intel to be able to rotate a fourth player to the A-bomb site. Config's gonna start doing it now anyways, and Oboe's gonna start shifting as well. Very soon, Complexity is gonna gamble and have five players at this site, and even with the utility of Astralis, that can be tough. Still a double nade on Oboe and Config as well. Yeah, and if they save that for the actual bomb plot, which we've seen before as an actual strategy to be run, I think MIBR did it a couple of times on this map, and if you know how to do that, blame if goes down though, so a little bit of an issue there, but let's see if they can actually land one of these grenades. It's gonna be a bit early, so they're not waiting for the- Oh, oh it's a double! Oboe will take down Megaskin Glaive, and that surely shocks them. They win the round somehow. What a turnaround. Explosive start here to the second half. Where did that nade land? And that must have been absolutely perfect. They did just enough chip damage with the previous nades, the scout, the other deagles. And here it comes. Oh, it's so perfect. Can you translate that? It says, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> they, they were uh, not excited. Rush, 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 rush. Utility just take down Astralis now. They're going to try and see if they can speed this one up. You can hear that a little bit here. 10 to 7. Complexity off to a hot start, even after losing the pistol. Woof. That's Glaive taking down Poison, who has been on fire this game so far, but he just got absolutely rocked. And now they're following it up. Magus with a shot, a little bit of a return to calm. Actually, Glaive will hit one more headshot. This is so dangerous here. They can't lose this round complexity. It's so weird. They've had to use their own utility in a defensive fashion that close to the bomb site just so they could, you know, have some kind of safety. Device gonna try and get away. Good prediction from Blame F. The Molotov forcing him into the open. And I think he saw someone out of... I mean, he could have probably guessed that anyway, but just a little bit of information could be the big difference. That smoke is going to be really annoying for Astralis. They have a deal and a scout, so, so spamming through the smoke for a long time, that's not going to be viable if someone starts defusing that bomb. And a good read, Blame F, not even just the force out with the Molotov, but reading that one as well. He's got the right idea. Sip trying to be clever, but Blame F will save his team there. He's got the kit as well and the triple. What a nice round. I mean... It shouldn't have been this awful to begin with, but at least they recover it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's great that we see them recover it because it, it shouldn't have been, but Glaive hit some very nice shots. You got to give him credit, right? That, that round is not even close if Glaive doesn't nail those shots with the scout earlier on. But this is all blame after save the day. Molotov, the prediction, maybe even spotted the legs as the smoke cleared, but a couple very nice kills down the stretch. 10 to 8, complexity just two rounds back. That plant will help Astralis' money, but they have to kind of sit this round out just a bit. Deagle's picked up. D250 on Zipnix. And this should, should be where they just have a, a little bit of an easier time. Obo, in fact, being aggressive. Could be dangerous, but he's got Rush there with him, so now whatever danger there might have been is completely evaporated. Clever angle from Config. I like that we're still at least seeing the confidence from from Complexity. Yeah. To just stick around, take fights. Yeah, this is a round against just Deagles, but even in the gun rounds, players are more than happy to sit in the open, take those those medium range duels with the M4s, with the Kriegs. You want me to come and help a little bit? They're not scared to come take fights against some of the best players in the world. Ten to nine. AWP on Poison, and he's been phenomenal with both sniper rifles today, the Scout and the AWP. No op yet out on Astralis. See what the Danes have got planned for us here. Look at the odds have almost completely evened out. Complexity converting a bunch of people into believers at the moment. Glaive will be cruising around that corner, almost not even stopping. Look, taking out Config. Look at how weird of a position Oboe's in with his teammate going down. They have control of mid, they can come from behind, so he's trying to sneak back to the bomb site. but that's what happens. You get caught, 
by just the one player waiting at the bottom of the staircase. Dupree with another frag to add on top of Glaives. And this defense is spread so thin. And this is a minute and a half they have to play with a two-man disadvantage with map control loss at critical portions. Device and Glaive going to be in middle. Yeah, they're so happy to wait this out, Astralis, right now. <laughs> they know that. Any mistake uh, given to them right now, that, that's around 100% won. Running into Poison's AWP could be one of the issues. Oh, Blame F and Rush come back with a couple of kills each. None of them traded so far. That's, that really should not be happening from Astralis' point of view. And look at Sip, he's down to 33. And now they're, they're kind of being pushed back into that AWP. And Blame F is re-aggressing. He just got a kill here. Sees, feels no pressure. He's gone back to a position. He can have a fast flank as long as Poison can get one and survive. That'd be massive. And there's no flashbangs to force him off the angle. It's two Molotovs and a smoke for Astral, so Poison should have at least one chance to get a kill. Yeah, he should. And look at the time as well. 26 seconds. They want to be really careful at the moment. Dupree, actually, he's got the bomb in middle. He, the bomb just went down. Which is, that's it? They, they have to try and jump over the wall, and that's not gonna happen. Poison goes down. Astralis, they could have probably done this if the bomb was on the other side, but they get absolutely crushed. Poison with two kills, and then the bomb on the other side of the wall. That is very strange. This is absolutely stunning. 10 to 10 complexity. We said it on, we saw it on Dust 2. They came back from a three on five situation on Dust 2. They've done it again. These are rounds that Astralis just does not lose with a high percentage. Yeah, it's very uncommon what you're seeing. You see it in their faces a little bit, you know, slight disbelief, just so what? What's yeah, a bit of a shake of the head. What do you say, Majeski translated him saying earlier, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. They're, they're a bit shell-shocked at the moment. This has got to be worrying. Ten, ten. I, don't, I don't know if this is a mistake, but Dupree has bought down to 500, and they're going to go for it. This is... A very bold decision with the economy. It, uh, this certainly doesn't feel very Astralis-like, does it? No. They have an AK-47 on Glaive, Glil on Dupree, pistols and a MAC-10 on the others, and let's see how this goes, but this could be the turning point of the entire map, and that's a great opening kill for Poison, and he's gonna back off, and Blame F's got some space for him. He's kept them back for the moment, and Magus is down very low. That's a lot of powerful weaponry that Astralis invested in that's already taken out of their hands. Grenade land. Oh, no. right through the wall. Rush is ready to reply. They're not having any of it in this round, and he's moved into a bit of a position here. Got to be careful about when that goes away, but Dupree's right on the other side, and Rush, he's not going to win the fight. A little bit unfortunate there, but still a two on three, and with Config showing up to get the one kill, he's looking for more. Actually, that could have worked. What a madman. That's a bit of roll of the dice for Rush, and I mean, they're still in a three versus one, so it shouldn't be a problem. And there's the shoulder peak from Dupree right into the crosshair. Complexity take the lead. That's five in a row. They're on fire at a perfect time. That risky investment from Astralis just doesn't work. In no. fact, it might, as, might just backfire. Completely backfire, and it's so confusing. I, I don't, I mean, if they're gonna take that risk, I'm not sure why the A rush again would be the thing that they'd be going for. Config, by the way, now taking the lead. He's actually overtaken Obo ever so slightly. He's 20 and 17, Obo at 17 and 12. So we mentioned Config during that Dust 2 map as being, you know, sort of a momentum player and someone with an incredibly high skill ceiling that we just haven't seen for a long time. Now's a good time for him to really show up. Rush pushing in, and there's a lot of people on the other side. I that's don't want to be giving too much away here. Yeah, that's not it. That's not the peak you want to take. Forces a smoke out early. Oh, that's a good follow-up, Nate. And Obo just steps in front of it. He wants one more, and he's found it. Beneath them, Config's got the cover. Glaive tried to peek up, and Config picks him right off through the crate. Blame F in middle, and the danger is swept aside chance for a 1D, but they know where Sip is now, so not going to be too much happening. Damn, he threw that nade about a quarter mile. He was absolutely ready. Poison going to get the kill at the end. Sip at least deciding to stay, you know, on the building. Not like Device. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't follow that one. That's not going to be in any of Device's guides. Six rounds in a row now for Complexity. And remember, they lost the pistol round in this half. That's the only round they've lost in this half. 
It's hard to believe. Astralis have had their chances to kind of run away with this one. They win pistol, they fail to convert the second. Later on, they lose a five on three as Complexity comes back on the CT side. It's the Config being there to help him out is huge. And I, I have to imagine, I don't want to you know, put him on the spot or, or, or force their, their conversation, but you have to imagine, I know this is always a talking point for du Duncan, is the idea of you know, ring rust is, is coming in. Remember, this, this complexity team, while not playing games on LAN, have been playing in qualifiers, have been boot camping, have been you know, competing to find spots in some of these tier one tournaments for the last month. Astralis has been enjoying a well-earned vacation. Yeah, and I mean, you, you know, people probably even can and probably will make the argument that even that that kind of vacation is also important in in some sense. But if you show up now and you feel like, well, complexity actually looked like they're way more warmed up, and and in spite of, as you said, some pre-game interviews that suggested that they weren't really sure about themselves, even that's not what we're seeing in the server at the moment. Everybody's shocked right now. Twelve to ten, double up on that CT side. They've won. Five in a row, and they need to keep going here. Don't let them back in. That's oh, a nice no. flick poison again. He is lightning fast with that sniper rifle every single time. It felt like he had his choice of two different targets. He spotted almost two heads that he could have taken off. That's a very fast flick. And it's back to the B-bomb site we go. Oboe is going to have a job. He needs... Okay, he spotted it at the perfect moment. No danger. No shots exchanged, his own Molotov extinguished. Oh, he heard that nade hit him. He heard that nade hit Glaive, and he's got the kill through the smoke. Unlucky for Glaive, but a great play from Oboe. And now he's flashed in, he's got one more, and he's got the information. A great tag team they've got on here, Vic, between Config and Oboe. Just the st instant timing of that flashbang, he just... Either Config called it or Oboe did himself, but that worked out really well. Now he's sneaking around a little bit scary. He's still going to pick up the kill, and that leaves Dupree. One versus four, and Complexity making this round work. <laughs> Oboe is... He's a stud in that B-bomb side right now. And this? The, the grenade that tagged you, are absolutely right. Yeah. I, I mean, they're starting to look very, very good. Listen, the tactics and the strategy might not have been there on the T side that we saw, but this, this team play, this kind of micro team play that they're having, that pop flash call from Oboe, whether it's Config or Oboe making it, the commitment from both of those players into that, beautiful teamwork. Beautiful teamwork. 13 to 10, a three-round lead. And again, Astralis just don't really have the money to bring out a very strong buy. So again, due to that, you know, economic investment, that economic risk earlier, they have another kind of, uh, you know, question of, of whether they need to buy here or save one round. Just when they pull it up and it says age 16, doesn't that just make you feel like, you know, why is he, why is he so good? <laughs> it's just, it's outrageous to me. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of, listen, this is, we, we need this in North America. We need those younger players getting started in the professional scene at an earlier age, getting this experience. That's, that's going to be the next step forward to have more than just Team Liquid, more than just EG fighting at the, at the top echelons of Counter-Strike. You need to start going down and dipping into the younger players the way we're seeing other regions do. Yeah. North America is still one of those regions that's been hesitant to put faith and trust in some of the young, unproven players. Yeah, I think there was an interview with Yanko uh, in, in week one here in, in London where he sort of said, well, the fact that, that that is kind of already a proven way of doing this, actually those young players can handle themselves really well in big tournaments. I thought, he, I thought that was more people should pay attention to that because that's, uh, th that's exciting. Obviously, FaZe have one of their own. And they don't have half a million dollar buyouts. That's a good point as well. That's always fun. Utility exchange, utility dump from both teams. Astralis on the losing end, and Rush is caught in a corner, but he's keeping composed the way a major champion only can. Eventually goes down, device to follow up, and it's all on config. AWP, and they're swarming towards his position. Yeah. Don't throw away this round of your complexity, and they might not have a chance at it. Line of sight into the bomb site here for Blame F, and he's scoped up, but they still have a fair few grenades. They could make his life very, very tricky. They're going to smoke off on one side. That Molotov not really doing much of anything, but a free kill, and Omega is there with a swift return. 40 seconds. I don't think they know that Blame F is here, but they're still going to be running around the other side, and no, that I, makes his life really tricky. I think Megas heard a footstep at the last second. Yeah. Dupree's already coming back. They've committed device to the A bomb site. Dupree's in the middle, but he's going back towards B. Now they have the information. And Blame F, you've got to take a gamble right now. Which bomb site do you hustle to and commit? He has the right call, but I don't think he can win this. And you might just want to preserve the economy. 
Yeah, that's going to be critical, isn't it? Maybe even just... Maybe just go to take some weapons away, but don't actually commit to the retake unless some kind of gift is given to you. Yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable. He also, I don't think he can know exactly how low they are. Yeah, not that it necessarily even makes the biggest difference here, but he's checking it all out and not get, getting that one gift that you were talking about. Would have been finding someone in here looking the wrong way. That is not going to happen. So that was a round that, in some sense, they didn't really need to lose. Hard, it's, hard, it's hard to blame them because they've been successful at being aggressive over there, and this time it's just sort of backfired. But Rush got caught in an awkward spot. Even if he got one kill and remained composed, Oboe going down without a kill, which has not been a factor in this in this half so far. Yeah. I think the big one was was Config was very committed with that AWP on the railing. He could have he could have played that much more passively. He had his teammate there with the Krieg, I believe it was actually Blame F, holding the line. He could have kind of just sunk back into quad behind the boxes and waited for contact on the other end. And you see even in the replay how Rush and Oba obviously wanted to, to time, you know, that push together. And I think Astralis were just further up than they were expecting, so timing was off a little bit. Astralis back with the A push this time. They're not going to get... Uh, oh, there's still actual... Oh, oh my god, the follow-up! I was about to say, they're not going to face really any kind of an opposition, but two grenades! That's an enormous amount of damage. Yeah, that's well worth the price of admission for complexity. Two nades and a Molotov slows things down, nets you a kill. And a half, Glaive is down very low. Poison blinded at the last second, but there's the spam through the smoke. And this is where these rounds get scrappy. Astralis not necessarily having the manpower, having to take the risks. Oh, and look at this. You have to admire it from Blame F. Dupree down low. The grenade running through the window. That almost tagged him and actually did hit him. He just didn't go down. But Dupree eight health in a one versus four. And there's not even any point in sticking around, is there? Can't even dream of doing anything, but just trying to save this AK. That's 14 rounds for complexity, and yeah, that absolutely got shut down. And the money for Astralis, I mean, they can they can buy in this upcoming round, but this is starting to become a huge problem for them. We we talked about this on Dust2. For an underdog and a young team in a new lineup, complexity, your biggest ally in this perhaps is momentum. Yeah. We saw a massive 15 to 2 round run on Dust2. Well, at the moment, they're what, eight of the last nine? An eight to one run for complexity to get up to 14 rounds. This has been awesome. And for a team like Astralis that's so good at stealing that momentum away against some of the best teams in the world, they've been stumped here today. They haven't been able to do it in that same fashion. You see Blamef rushing through the smoke to try and get the guy planting the bomb. And we've seen Oboe push through smoke over at the B bomb side. I think one of the things Astralis aren't enjoying in this game is that a lot of teams will have that extra level of respect for them because, because I mean, for good reason. But sometimes they actually get away with a bit more than they should because, you know, teams second guess themselves a little bit. So it's like, oh, let's not do it. It is Astralis. Maybe it's all a trick. Maybe, you know, we're playing into there. With right now, I feel like complexity are actually saying, you know what? We're just going to do what feels right. And we're not going to allow you that space to work the map with. And it's really great. Well, that's most effective when you have such massive man advantages. <laughs> Dupree, 9 HP. He's got to bow out of the fight already. He wanted to get aggressive. Wasn't he the one that got shot through the middle a couple of times on Dust 2? Yes, I believe so. Now he's feeling the grenades But to well. go to go back to that point, I mean, coming through the smoke in that fashion, it works when you're in those 4 and 2s, and a lot of that stems from having the early kills. And it, I mean, if you look at this config, 2 to 1 in opening duels. Obo, 3 to 1 in opening duels. Poison is 5 Ooh. to 3. Blame F is 2 to, 2 to nothing. He's never lost an opening duel on this map. So they're finding some of those early kills that give them the manpower to take those risks. Now that all vacating the B side of the map, which fair play if you want to go for it, but if you have to do this quickly then, because if anyone pushes that B ramp and, and don't, if they don't find anyone, they know, oh, actually, only poison here. Maybe a bit of a risk for complexities. Hardly anyone at the A bomb side. Just confusing in many ways. That's a weird timing for Poison to back off as well, to throw a smoke. He's going to miss it. He's going to miss any chance to mount a defense and good damage with the utility. He's been fantastic with this off, but they are so blocked out. And I don't even mind necessarily the risk being taken. Now we'll put to a test. How much has complexity? We saw last weekend, some of the teams had some very good setups to retake this with utility in five on fives. We'll yeah. see if complexity has that in their, in their repertoire. Oh, that's almost a kill for the smoke. Look at how low three of the Astralis players are. 
This could maybe work. Another grenade back there, even softening up Glaive. They're almost out of health on the Astralis side, and now come the smokes on top of the bomb. Can they actually get the defuse in? No one's doing it quite yet. The fight is on, and Oboe goes down. Rush holding it from one side, but finally, someone taps the bomb, and the rest of Astralis show up. Device with one more kill, and I think they're out of time. A brave fight coming in for Complexity, doing a lot of damage to Astralis' economy, but... They couldn't quite make it work. I actually, I think they had the protocols down. They yep. they didn't know where the bomb was planted. They thought the bomb was planted at those default boxes. That's where all their smokes went up. So when they jump in to try and get that diffuse and all the chaos, no one's actually covered. Look where the bomb is planted. Yeah, right. Looks where the smokes are. They had no chance, but they had the right plan if the bomb was in a different spot. So, yes. And that's... Shout out. You get 50%. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I mean it, it, it's hard to know, right? You almost have to make that that choice throwing the grenades before you actually get confirmation. And part of the reason why they probably didn't have the intel is only one player. Poison was playing that so passively, wasn't even close to get the sound cues. Pre waiting, hoping that Oboe is going to take a step forward so he can cleanly open that bomb side. But again, they're quite leaning towards the B side. Config is right there to make a jump up window if anything happens and. They have rushed there to tell about Oboe. So they're, they're kind of expecting complexity, I guess, that one of these rounds will be a uh, B-hit for Astralis, and if they pick the right one... Well, it at least helps this time that Poison isn't playing so passively on the A-bomb site. He's actually peering oh, down the A-ramp, right. so he has the information. He sees nobody down there, which gives all the confidence in the world. The one weak spot of this defense is Config in middle. He's all alone, but it might not matter. Obo pushing to the edge, finds a kill immediately, but he can't get really get back around the corner. Rush, a little bit disjointed here. Now he's slightly fighting on his own. There's going to be a smoke set up behind him. I think there's a bit of a gap there, maybe. But Rush is just biding his time. The fire won't spread to him. Blame if going down, and Rush, he's paranoid now. They could be walking in behind him. He almost spots one of them, but there's the flank coming through, and Megas will take down Rush. And Estrella's now really opening it up. That shot does not connect, and the bomb has been planted. Two on three. Config sneaking up and poison and Config. It's just AWPs, but they find a Ooh. kill each. Oh, he flicks through. He tags up the pre and he's very low on health. They could do this with pistols. I don't know if they know yet, but this AK-47, he's got one chance to pre and one alone, or they will be at a match point. They're right behind him as well, and it's the op to do it. Complexity at 15 rounds on map two against Astralis. It's so hard. He's down to one health, Config. I, I like the aggression. Go at least find out where he is. You're the low HP player. Go hunt him down so your teammate at least has a chance in the one versus one. That is a very difficult round. But again, a man advantage. A three on two for Astralis, and they are picked apart by the Ops. Poison is playing a fantastic game. 18 and 16. It's not the craziest in terms of his score, but he's been so on point with this Op. He actually jumped with the Op yes! out at, at just one health. Config really is a crazy player. Play MF spraying through. A bad start to this round for Astralis. I mean, they won't even have a chance to fight for this. They need to win the next three in a row, which is way more doable than it was on Dust 2. I think they needed to win eight in a row to get their overtime. But man, they're up against Poison and that AWP, and he doesn't miss many shots. There's Leg shot on Sip, putting him down to six health. They'll take that even. And look at the confidence to leave him on his own. <laughs> it's like the third time we've seen him in the last four rounds playing this bomb site all by himself. That's a lot of faith. And the Bulgarian boosted up now to peer over the smokes if and when they eventually do come in. Some, there's some decent grenades on Astralis, but the thing that they don't have is enough for an execute and then for the after plant. So they, they'd probably be using most of these grenades getting into a bomb site, and yeah. the question becomes, you know, can they stop the defuse afterwards? And that becomes even more painful with the ops in hand. If you don't have yeah. the, the utility to block off the lines, the, the, the vision from those oppers, we saw just the previous round, they got decimated by them. Well, Glaive is setting up for that smoke towards the B-bomb site. Config's playing in CT spawn with Flash out. He's just there for support for Oboe. And Oboe immediately smokes it. He's just ready to slow them down. Oh, it did. Still got the shot to Pre. Somehow able to win the fight, and Rush not quite sure if he wants to peek into that window. 
A free kill as the pre peeks into that one, and a follow up config with the AWP. It's a rare sight, but it's working out well. I think that was a dead body he was shooting at. Now he's just trying to no scope through, and he's playing right at the edge, making the jump on over. It's poison. The other AWP leaving Magus can sip alone. Two on three, trying to keep this dream alive for Astralis and get back into overtime somehow. Sip will find a kill, and blame F. Maybe a rare chance there. They need to get on and defuse that bomb right now. Complexity, 2-1-2. Two two. They have a slight health advantage, but against these weapons for Astralis, it might not matter. Like, oh, Magus, he had the health for it, but now he's been taken out and Sip just trying to buy time, flank it around. Blame it, hunting him down. He's and he it. turns for it. Immediate defuse. He's right there with the kid. Oh my god, I can't believe it. 16 and 12. Complexity taking down Astralis 2-0. What a way to kick off your performance on land. Complexity, the very first game, they drew the best team in the world, and they've shocked them coming out of the break. A bit of rust, but forget that. Phenomenal play from these young players, from this young team. That is impressive stuff. Obo delivered in both maps. It was the config we wanted to see. The team play was on point, and that is something special. That is such a ridiculous high to hit at the start of the year, just showing up and taking down Astralis. It's hard to believe, but I mean, what a fantastic uh, performance. Obo over at the B bomb side, his, his, sort of his teamwork with Config half the time, and then Poison and Config, both with orbs. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to watch more, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And then, of course, keep it going. Watch some more Blast.